Uh, basically, what we did uh, last week, we want to show you again the regional grant made and the changes that you made last week. And uh, if uh, those are appropriate, we'll lock those in. And we, uh, I mean, we had our two policy discussions. The one on administrative overhead was a bit uh, fractious. Uh, so we just want to make sure that uh, now that you've had a chance to think about it, uh, we'll get Mr. Sfino to run through um, that one. I don't think there was too much controversy on the reserve one, but certainly the administrative overhead. Uh, we want to make sure that you're comfortable with that. So we'll do that and uh, we'll run through the program changes. There weren't very many of them, um, but by the end of the day, we want to know what your preferences are so that uh, when we get uh, to the next meeting, we'll have added in the program change request. And then same with capital, we'll go through that. Uh, really what we're interested in is your perspective on anything that's discretionary. Uh, we aren't looking for you to reapprove any carry forwards or, or um, uh, those smaller ones uh, that we had indicated last week, but uh, the big ones, especially the ones that are gonna come into the operating budget, uh, we wanna make sure that you're comfortable with. And then we can show you the impact of those. And then we'll start uh, going through uh, our budget. Uh, we'll start with regional, we're sub-regional, uh, and then shared, and then local. And uh, we'll see how far we get uh, by 3 o'clock. So that's uh, sort of the plan for the day. And um, we did want to convene this as a corporate services meeting just so that we properly record it. Uh, meet the Sunshine Laws under the Local Government Act, and uh, that we do get a definitive answer on what we need to put into the budget so that you can see the uh, impact of the discussion. Okay, um, so unless there's any questions on uh, the intentions for today, uh, we'll just start in, Madam Chair. Okay, great, thank you very much. So. Uh, turning the page, we're going to go uh, review regional grant and aid requests, what was asked and what the board voted to award. And, and keep in mind that may change in the future if the board so chooses. Um, Jim, were you going to work through this then? Yes. Okay, I'll turn things over to Jim. Thank you, Madam Chair. So as stated in the last meeting, uh, the, there's a number of uh, requests that the board did approve and one that wasn't approved. So the... Uh, the objective today right now is just to reaffirm the uh, amount and that is still uh, accepted. We can start off with uh, Alley Cats Alliance Society. The request was 25,000, the award was $5,000. Is that still going to hold? Uh, maybe what we'll do, Jim, is just we'll, we'll do just go, the slate. Let's go through them? Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Oh, and, okay, so second, uh, Animal Lifeline Response Team, the request was $4,500, and the board uh, authorized the full 4500 the Ha 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 Kids Fest. Okay, we Five. have a question, I'm just, if we, yeah. Director Gettins, you have a question, do you? Um, yeah, sorry, I can't, it's cutting in and out, so I'm just curious if that's on my end, or is that for everybody? Is there anybody else having difficulties hearing? Jim's clear everybody. to me. Yeah, it's, uh, it looks like everybody's shaking their heads. No, that they're okay, Riley? Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. Riley and I spoke last night because we were at the public hearing that she's having some glitches maybe. If it's problematic, um, then maybe Director Gettins would want to come in and, and have a seat in the boardroom. Keep us yeah, posted. I will, uh, yeah, I'll see if I can figure something out on my end. Sorry, carry on. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Back to the Ha uh, Ha uh, Ha uh, Kids Fest. <laughs> you get to say it again. <laughs> the request was 5000 and the board uh, did approve the full amount. Uh, Metal Art Festival, again, 5500 approved the full fifty five. Scottish Festival Society, same thing, 2,000 request, 2,000 awarded. Immigrant and Community Society, 69. At that point, 3,450 was approved. And the Volunteer Center, they asked 15,000, and the board did not approve anything at that time. So 
what is your uh, what, what is your thoughts on asks for the award and is there any changes okay so directors is everybody comfortable leaving this as is for now or uh, does anyone have a, a desire to um, discuss any of these again right now looking for hands I'm not seeing any hands up, so I'm thinking that these could stay as is for now, Jim. And we'll s oh, hang on, Director Knodel's got a hand up. Go ahead, please. I uh, received a request the other day for the uh, music in the park uh, uh, program. I'm just wondering if that's going to show up on this. Too late. Oh, that's a community grant and aid, Director Knodel, not regional grant and aid. Thank you. Okay, great. Anybody else with a question or comment? And, and Director, Kn oh, good. Director Knodel's hand came down. Excellent. Okay, um, not, oh, Director Holmes, go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you. I know we talked about this last time, and I, I don't really, uh, you know, want to beat a dead horse. But uh, after thinking about, <clears throat> after thinking about it some more, um, I, I, I want to get my head around how last year we we approved the funding for the Kids Fest and I believe Metal Art Festival, <clears throat> and and then that money was returned to us. But last year we approved that money specifically as a regional grant. So I don't understand. I'm still having a hard time understanding how that money could have just gone back into. I don't know where it went, uh, <clears throat> but it's got to be around somewhere that and it was designated for a regional grant. So I, I don't understand why that can't just that money just can't be carried forward to this year for those two organizations. I, I, <clears throat> I know it was explained last week, but I, I still it doesn't sit well with me. Think so we're just just It would have just shown as surplus uh, at the end of 2020, Director Holmes, if it hadn't been spent. But it's got to be somewhere. Yeah, it, it would be in, in uh, back in our bank account. So right, we're approving. So, I, so the point is, I think Director Holmes wants to know, is it sitting there and, and it's going to be used to the, for, say, the two grants there? And... Right now we have a total of twenty five thousand. So does that mean we're just requisitioning roughly fifteen thousand? I mm -hmm. think is what, what directors are wondering. Basically, exactly. uh, when, when we look at regional grants, these are one year uh, approvals. So uh, I mean, fine, just approve them again. Uh, that's the easiest way. But uh, we would not carry forward. A grant if a grant was awarded and, and wasn't spent we wouldn't carry those forward in the future years we would bring them forward and ask the board if they wanted to approve them again right but i think so that's i think a separate issue to the fact they're just wondering that ten thousand because we taxed for it is sitting there we didn't it didn't go to some other use right it's no it would yeah. show a surplus in general right government. so it's their director homes but we have to approve these awards if we don't approve the ones that were Kids Fest and Meadowlark, there's still the 10,000 there because we tax for it, but it can go to some other grant. Does that make sense? No. Yeah. yeah, okay, good. Uh, Director Roberts, you had a question? Yeah, um, uh, my question would be in the new process with reserve um, that uh, Jim is looking at, would it be if in the future, let's say those this time around again, due to COVID, they don't use that money, but then it would be a regional grants um, reserve so that that's what we would still, so, you know, it wouldn't go away and it would be tied to grants. It may not go to that same organization, but be tied into that line item. I think that's a little bit of the, you know, the misnomer, you know, the money saved last year went into general um, surplus on how we use it, but we're wondering in regards to our direction about keeping things into line items. And I'm wondering whether or not the new format with reserves would be clearer 
in regards to that? No, no, it's not a reserve. So uh, each year we advertise uh, for those groups that are interested in applying for a regional grant, and there's a deadline on that. And uh, those that have been submitted and uh, we bring forward for the board to discuss for that uh, coming year. So the ones that were approved uh, for the 2020 budget were allocated for 2020. And then if they, uh, if uh, somebody didn't uh, use it and returned it, like the uh, uh, the kids fest, uh, it just goes into surplus and, it, and that would be then used to uh, reduce the requisition for the subsequent year. So it goes back to the people that we requisitioned it from. Oh, I see a thumbs up. Director Roberts is good. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else before we move on? Okay. Thank you. Back to you, Jim. Thank you. So the, the, the these amounts then will be put into the budget. For, so your the next draft, draft number two, will include the the, the regional grant requests. So the, the next step is uh, talking about the allocation of administration overhead and reserves. I'll start off with the administration overhead. So just a little bit of recap of what was said, said last meeting. The same cost centers are to be used as uh, two, 2020. Wages to be included in the net operating budget and charge administration. That's new. So to, to, to 2020, uh, that, that 2020 charges did not include the uh, the wages, a contract service tier added, which requires uh, minimal support and would have a new lower rate. So on that one there, I've ha I have had some meetings with uh, some of you directors and you're discussing if uh, some of your services should be classified as contracts. And I have a list that I will bring into the next meeting or discuss it now, where some of you have asked to go from a tier three to a tier four, tier three being uh, the second lowest and tier four being contract to work and that's the lowest but what that does is wherever something changes from a three to a four the administration is redistributed back to all the rest of the departments so uh, i believe that should look at the board as a whole to authorize and uh, finally the board did look at the capital project tier added which would charge 20 percent of the administration uh two capital projects but recognize different levels of support. So you may we may have a capital project that costs ten million dollars and another one that costs fifty thousand, and each one would have a different tier. But we're not talking about the full one point eight million dollars of um, total administration. We're just talking two hundred and seventy thousand dollars distributed amongst the different capital projects, but based on a, a sub tier group. So with that, what we're looking at is using that on an ongoing basis. I, I believe that that's what the board asked. If there's any questions on that, I'd be glad to answer them. Any questions so far? Okay, I'm not seeing any, Jim. Okay, thank you. So the, the next one was uh, is a reserve policy. I think the board was uh, fairly unanimous on uh, agreeing to that. So I looked at the General Government Finance Office Association recommendation best practices, and based on the previous use of surpluses and the up and down charges of tax requisitions, I recommended that we use the expense side to base our minimum and maximum reserve balances, and that that's something that what we would do is take out the capital portion in the operational budget and determine what is strictly just operations and then determine what the 17% and 30% is. That's something that I don't see it as a major issue. And it could be actually included in each of the, the budget uh, papers so that it can actually say the minimum or maximum on each reserves should be. There is a, I believe we have a very good handle on and control on the reserves. It's uh, something that it's a, we have a reserve, essentially it's a reserve tracker and with that reserve tracker, eventually I'd like to have a graph with the minimum and maximum on there. Uh, the reason there's a maximum is you don't want to overtax. And then as soon as you start to hit that 30%, you 
that's when you can start using some of the reserves back to keep the tax reposition at a flat line. Like right now, the issues are that we're keeping the, the tax requisition at a constant level because the surplus determines what the tax requisitions are. An example, there's some examples in your budget, essentially that says uh, there's a tax requisition for $5,000 in 2019. There was a $5,000 surplus. Essentially, you've got no taxes. Then next year, you've got a very unhappy taxpayer. So this will eliminate that. Uh, there's times when there's going to be exceptions where there's an operational expense that is unanticipated, and that's where you start using the operational reserves. So they're a lot more freer than uh, the capital reserves. So if there's any questions on that, I, I'd be glad to answer that. Uh, yes, go ahead, Director Obert. Are you there, Director Obrick? I I'm here, but can you hear? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, on my computer, I, I get a delay on the mute button regularly, and I, I have <laughs> had trouble hearing uh, earlier when you were asking if anybody else was having troubles besides uh, Director Gettens. I was waving my hand, yes, but I, I didn't get seen. The last session uh, regarding allocation of it in. I, again, I raised my hand and didn't get seen. So I'm having the classic area D problem of being seen and being heard, which is uh, irritating. And I, I know others are irritated with the technical challenges uh, from time to time. But but I had so a Director question. Director Obrick, Director yes. Obrick, can I ask that you, you use the hand button because we can only see so many faces on the screen because we have the document up? So I can't I see, see hand waving of everybody. So we do need I will, a little. We need I will to be click. happy. I will be very happy to use the hand button. But but I, 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 I I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I I'd like to ask a question about the uh, allocation of admin overhead. And okay, my my question relates to clarification. I, I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm having more trouble understanding this than maybe most of the board members, but my clarification is, if I'm understanding correctly, we're taking a change from before, and the change is we're taking 20% of the total admin overhead, and we're taking it away from what would be shared with the municipalities and we're putting it to capital projects and then allocating it per project as a fairness measure because there's clearly an admin overhead uh, to everything. And what the, the net result is, is a, a changing of cost to the municipalities of 20 percent diminishment that they don't pay any share of that they paid before and that entire 20 percent is now reallocated to the electoral area so they were paying a percentage of that 20 percent before the difference is we, we just pay more than we did before and it's going specifically to capital projects so that could vary from electoral area to electoral area if one electoral area had all the capital projects and the other eight had none, then all that 20% of admin would go to that electoral area. And that's the clarification I'm looking for. Am I understanding correctly? And if I'm misunderstanding, uh, could you help me understand better? That, that's my question. So I'll do just an intro on this, Director Robrick, and then Mr. Safino will get into the details. But it, it's not based on whether it's a, an electoral area or a municipality, it's based on the service. So the admin fee is charged to a service. In some services, uh, there could be electoral areas and incorporated communities that would be uh, charged um, based on who was included in that service uh, area. So, um, but on the specifics, I'll, I think you've got it pretty good, uh, but we'll turn it over to Mr. Stino. You do understand it very good. A good example is the Campbell Mountain landfill. 
they've got one of the highest capital asks in uh, this budget, and that's more than just one uh, service area. So a lot of different uh, members are paying for that. Uh, the the objective is to try to be fair and equitable on the distribution for the administration, and what was uh, presented for 2020 wasn't. I don't believe it was. Wasn't. This is more of a fair, and it distributes the administration costs. I think in a in a way that it's not just one service area that's paying. And again, Campbell Mountain is the best example. There are areas, for instance, for the Olala water system where that's specific to one uh, an area and they may have to pay a small percentage. That's not something that would have a major capital cost. So the tier would be a lower. So that's why the sub tiers so that it makes it more fair for all of the different services that we have. Okay, go ahead, Director Oberick. Yes, and I, I wanna say thank you very, very, very much. That helped a lot. Uh, I was missing the piece that the CAO just added for me, and I want to thank you because I, I didn't quite get it, but but now I get it better. Uh, it, it It's going to vary because some of these may involve municipalities, some may not, but but I, I do understand it better now, and I want to thank both uh, both the CAO and the finance manager. I, uh, I was challenged with that detail. And, and I do feel that I understand it quite a bit better uh, from, from this uh, explanation. So I'm going to say thank you to both of you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Director Bush, go ahead, please. Yeah, so I'm having a hard time understanding that as well. Um, so Campbell Mountain, for instance, then, it's just the people or the areas and municipalities that use that facility, it wouldn't include Oliver or Asuyas, right? And then the same That's for them, true. or is it all in one pot? That is true. Uh, for Campbell Mountain, it would not include Oliver or Asuyas. Or Summerlin. Or Summerlin, yeah. It would just include those uh, communities, uh, which is Penticton and Karameas, uh, because they pay a transfer fee and then the electoral areas that use Campbell Mountain. Good, okay, thank you. Any other questions at this time? Okay, not seeing any hands up. Get back to you, Jim. So I'm assuming there's the, the, the reserve policy stands and we can start working that. So that can actually, will change in the, the next budget draft that uh, the board will receive. Excellent, thank you. So the next uh, part of the agenda is program change requests. We're looking at, uh, the top, there's eight of them, but the first one is a water rate review. So what the, uh, the department is asking for is $50,000 for a, a service impact for the nine water systems and the start date would be Q3 2021. What does the board uh, wish for you this? You might want to get Andrew to give a better description of that. Andrew, I believe you're out there. Do you want to give just some, uh, an we update did, on what this is all about? Okay, um, just, uh, <clears throat> can you uh, hear me at, at this point? Yeah, can I just, thank you, Andrew. I just want to check with the board. So we did go through all of these um, last week and voted so far to move forward on these. So um, whether the board wants to get into details of each of these again, I'm just wanting to get a feel or do you want to just have a quick you want to just do the summary? A quick summary of them and then see if certain program changes have questions. I see Director Gettins has a hand up. Go ahead, Director Gettins. Yeah, thank you to the chair. I don't know if we voted on them or not. I thought we just heard about them and then said we were gonna come back. I don't know that we had that agreement or not agreement. Yeah. I think we did, but we yeah. work off the summary. Yeah, you, yeah, I think that's correct, Director Gettins. I mean, obviously, we will do a, a final vote on the budget, which would put these in. So uh, we could work, we could go through each one and just see if there's any questions and if what's the flavor of the board, if we want to leave those in or not. Uh, Director Bush, you had a comment or a question as well? Yes, I agree with Director Gettins. We didn't get to vote on this, and I remember it okay. because of the okay mosquito program and I'm not in favor of the increase so 
Um, okay. I'd like okay. to like to talk about okay. that. Sounds good. So we'll work. We'll go through each one, and we we can call the question of a vote um, on them. So do we want to have each uh, manager speak to them then? Well, if you want just a little summary of them. Okay. So let's start then with the water rate review and have a, a brief summary on that one. Andrew, please. Sure. Um, give you the brief summary. So this is just a uh, review of our water rates. We've inherited a number of systems over the time. Uh, none of these systems are unified in terms of um, how our rates are structured. And really, it was just a, a review uh, in terms of allocating costs uh, based on fairness. So we were going to look at um, uh, how things were allocated amongst the various users and see uh, are we doing it in the most fair and equitable way possible. Okay, thank you. I just have a question. So the request is 50,000 for nine systems. How is that split out? Is it because we have some systems that are very small and some that are very large, like Naramata. So will Naramata pay more towards that 50,000? The bigger you are, the more that you would pay. Okay. It would, there would be a formula that would right. determine. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, any any other questions? Yes, Director Gettens, go ahead, please. Thank you, the Chair. I guess I'm not sure what the goal of it is and, and why, like, what, what are we looking for if we're trying to have all the rate payers have equal payments to their system? Or are we trying to figure out internally if we're allocating our, our maintenance staff um, fairly across the system? I guess it's just, I'm just not sure if it's like a, a benefit for taxpayers or if it's just an internal operation system to make sure that we're doing things fairly between the systems. Um, sure. So the answer to that, what we're looking at is uh, we still have to generate the same amount of revenue. Um, so the, uh, the board sets the budget. Um, what we're looking at is how those budgets are then split amongst the users. So we have a, uh, user fee schedules. Uh, some are fairly complex. And really, it's just a matter of um, uh, allocating fees uh, appropriately and fairly amongst the, the various users. So it's just a user fee review. If I may add to that, you're still going to have different rates for each service. What would it, what I see the goal here is looking at a consistent uh, charge. So right now we may have one service area that charges uh, for let's say a school, like I said last time, and another area that has a school that doesn't charge for a school. The, the recommendation would come to the board is. How consistent do you want the charges to be so that everyone, while the charge the rate's different, it's still the same rate structure? Okay, thank you. I'll go to uh, Director Gettens. Uh, so just as a follow-up then for our process here, are you looking for a motion to keep this on the budget or are we still in discussion? Yeah, we'd like we'd like a motion to support or to remove it. Okay, well, I'll put forward a motion to support. Okay, thank you. Is there a seconder? It looks like Director Roberts. I do see Director Knodel had a hand up before and it's back. So go ahead, Director Knodel. I just want to confirm here, we're, we're paying $50,000 for engineering uh, to, be, to basically uh, audit their own, uh, all of the seven different water systems and decide whether they're charging the same amount per glass of water, basically? No, um, this would be a consultant, Director uh, Knodel. So uh, we did, uh, I mean, most most water utilities do rate review. Uh, in some provinces, uh, it's regulatory. So they have to go before a utility uh, commission in order to set rates, and they have to do these rate reviews before then. We did one on West Bench uh, when we took the service over. And uh, I think the benefit is that it looks within the service and says, uh, okay, agricultural users, uh, they should be paying this much or residential users or commercial users. Uh, so it sets a strategy within that service. Uh, that's what it does. Will we have discussion on this later uh, as to how those rates are administered? Uh, this one troubles me because it's a 
it, it's trying to paint a one size fits all in a in a very complicated area where water availability can differ greatly from one area to the other. Uh, um, I'm just not sure how this is going to fall together, and I'd like to like to see considerably more discussion on it before uh, before it's implemented. I don't have a problem paying for the service for, for the for the the study. But uh, I, I don't want to lock myself into the implementation until I know the consequences to the, the people that I represent. Yeah, we can bring the terms of reference for the study uh, to committee before we go out. Uh, what we're interested uh, uh, at this point is whether uh, the board wants to pay the $50,000 for the study. We can work out the details if you do, um, but otherwise, uh, what finance wants to know is whether they include this 50000 in the 2021 budget. Fair enough. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments on this one? Okay. I'm not seeing any. So that's been moved and seconded. I'll call the question. All in favor? Okay, thank you. Hands can come down. And is anybody opposed? Okay, I'm not seeing any. That carries. We'll go on to the next one, Jim. Thank you. Next one is the landfill shadow bid. And that's uh, come from Mr. Reader. It's a $40,000 request. And in this case here, I believe Mr. Reader should be giving uh, some explanation on this. Rationale. Thank you. Uh, so next year, our um, heavy equipment contracts are coming due. So this is for Oliver, um, for uh, Karameas, and also for uh, Camel Mountain landfills. Uh, we spend in excess of a million dollars every year uh, for these contracts. And uh, so over the course of the contract, we're going to be spending over $7 million. Uh, what this is looking at is a review uh, of whether or not uh, we might be able to do uh, the same works in house cheaper. Uh, so this is to have a consultant uh, do a shadow bid uh, to see, to make sure that we're getting the best value possible. And so um, we think it's a good value considering uh, the amount of money that we're looking at spending. Okay, thank you, Andrew. So can I just clarify on the sheet, it just says Campbell Mountain Landfill is impacted, but you did mention... It, did it would mention affect... Oliver? What we'd look at doing is um, Campbell Mountain Landfill, OK Falls Landfill, um, Oliver Landfill, and I believe um, we would try to get uh, Karameas as well at okay. the transfer station. Okay, so that's all under the $40,000 request. Yes. Okay, thank you. I'll go to Director Gettens. Thank you. Just as a, a curiosity, if we're talking about that different tier system for admin costs, and this is a contract, what is the tier, what's the percentage of admin cost if this goes through? I'm just curious what the contract is. So it would be charged to the, whatever services are involved. So if there's four landfill services that are included, uh, it would be split up amongst those. Thank you. I'm looking for the percentage. If you had, like you said, you had a tier one, two, and three, and then you're thinking about adding a fourth tier for administrative charges. Is there a percentage allocated to that fourth tier that's less than a third tier? So as I stated, the capital administration would have a sub tier. So this would be charged on, under one of the sub tiers. So it would, the $40,000 is not a major project. So it's not a, $5 million water treatment plant, so that where that would be a, a 5A, and this one would probably be a 5D. So there wouldn't and be, the it'd be the more. Means, the 5C means a certain percentage though, right? Yes, well, the lower okay. of the percentages, yes. And what is that percentage number? That, as stated in the, in the last meeting, is once the board authorizes all of the capital projects, I will bring back those percentages because it's oh. going to depend on on uh, the, the weights. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, thank you. Any other questions on this one? Uh, Director Johansson, go ahead, please. Are you there, Director Johansson? Sorry, I, I forgot the mute there button again. <laughs> Uh, my question is just around where this is being funded from. Um, for me, if it's being funded out of the landfill revenue, landfill fees, I have no problem with it. But if it's a taxation request, I'm kind of struggling with it on that end. Just wondering where it's being funded from. It would come out of the uh, four landfills. So Oliver uh, does uh, have a certain amount that's through taxation. Uh, but I think still the majority of it is fees and charges, like a tipping fee. So it'd be uh, taken out of uh, that revenue from Oliver. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Director Roberts? Quick question that ties a little bit to this. So the contract was up in regards to the heavy equipment. How far off are we in regards to the contract around our curbside pickup? Just a quick question, if that information is available. Uh, I'm not sure offhand. I think it's, uh, we've got a couple of years coming up. I think there's, I don't think it's next year. I think it's the year after. Um, so I'd have to confirm that. Okay. Thank you. I'll go thank to you. Director Bush. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of these studies, but, uh, $40,000 for, uh, for a $7 million budget or whatever seems reasonable to me. Um, you know, it it could be uh, could save a lot more than forty thousand overall. I'm in favor of it. Great, thank you. Would you like to move the recommendation, Director Bush? Oh, you're on mute. Sorry, <laughs> I will make this uh, recommendation. Yes, I'll move it. Okay, thank you. It looks like Director Roberts is seconding. Okay, any further questions or comments on this one? Okay, I'm not seeing any. I'll call the question then all in favor. Thank you. Hands can come down. And uh, just I still got some leftover hands there. Director Gettins, Director Roberts. There we go. Thank you. Anybody opposed? Okay, that carries. Thank you. We'll go on to the next one, Jim. Thank you. So the next one is the mosquito program. It, it, it does state mosquito program 34197. I just want to clarify that a uh, portion of uh, that 34,000 would be distributed to other areas, for instance, Naramata Water, OK Falls, uh, Sewer, etc. 16,402 is directly would be charged to the 34197, but I understand that uh, Lisa has uh, more information on this and I believe she likes to talk to the board. Hi, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, since uh, the meeting last week, I've taken a look into the, uh, the raw data a little bit farther. And what I've discovered is that there was some inconsistencies and missing data that were used in the initial analysis for the allocations of the service. So I've been working with GIS to get the data repaired and I have just received all of the correct information. So I'm going to redo the analysis and it'll change the allocations to the different service users and then my subsequent program change request. So if I may, um, I could, if I could ask that this be considered for deferral for a later date. Okay. No, there's no deferral. We, we want to know if we have to include something in the budget uh, for mosquito program. So give us a ballpark. Okay. Uh, well, the request amount would be the same. It's just how it's split up among the different service users would change okay okay that's good to know but the other the other thing as well is for 2021 because this is an addition we were thinking we could use the operational reserves for this one year 
and then it would be allocated out depending on where it was actually used next year. Okay, but the issue is, do we want to expand the mosquito program? That's what the board right. has to discuss and they want to pay more for their mosquito program. Okay, thank you. And if I just make yeah, one go clarification. Ahead, uh, I found out uh, today that uh, it states on there that Semiland is excluded. I need to make sure that everyone knows that Semiland will could be included. Oh, they are? Yes. So oh. I, I just wanted to make sure that that was uh, out there. So take Summerland take off of Summerland this. Summerland off. Yes. So, so Princeton and Area E are yes. the two excluded. Yes. Okay. Got it. Okay. Go ahead, Director Gettens. Uh, thank you, the chair. I'd, I'd just move the request for deferral and keep this program going. I don't, I like it. <laughs> it's a great program. Sorry, what you said you want to move a deferral? No, well, do we need a motion to keep it in, but then also allow for the deferral of information? No, we just need yeah. to know whether it's in or out. We don't need a deferral. We just need to, a motion to keep the money in, and Lisa's going to, you know, give us a reconfiguration of the of how that's allocated out. All right, I'll make that motion then. Okay, so you're moving to keep that request in. Um, I, is there a seconder, Director Holmes? I believe your hand popped up as a seconder. Okay, we've got some other questions. I think Director Bush, go ahead, please. Yeah. So because my area went up like eight thousand last year and just to fifteen thousand this year, I, I can't be in favor of any more expansion for the mosquito program. It's just getting way out of line for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Director Bush. I'm wondering if there is uh, any, once Lisa works the numbers, if it'll change for you. That will change. Yeah. But we don't know whether it would go up or down, Director Bush. <laughs> yeah, it could go up. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Director Gettens, you have your hand up, or is that a leftover? Leftover? Okay, thank you. Anybody else with a comment or question on the Mosquito Program? No, I'm not seeing any. Oh, oh, Director Roberts, go ahead, please. Thank you. My hand was up before everybody else's. Oh. <laughs> I, 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 I got oh. cut off, I guess. Your hand, so I guess you're now at the you, bottom yeah. of the list. <laughs> oh, Sorry, bottom. I, I thought now I have to do a dance. No, you're at the bottom of the list, so sometimes you drop off the screen. So sorry, I'll have to keep scrolling to capture you. I uh, the reason um, I was jumping up and down earlier because again, too, with in regards to the reallocation, the change, because as um, Director Bush was stating, in 2019 we went up between the two of us 18,000. We went up 31,000 uh, for for this, or sorry, it was 2020. And then now we're going up 31,000 before this 34,000 is even added. Um, like it's, you know, allocation wise, um, and hence why both of us don't really want to see anything expanded because uh, we at the moment are, though we have the lion's share of the work, we also have the lion's share of the cost, which could be fair and equitable, but the same idea, there's a point where um, it's just, too much for the taxpayer to bear uh, in a challenging year. So anyways, that's uh, our concern. And question whether or not that 31,000 would change with this new allocation, which is not the 34, but the 31 that B and G share. Okay, thank you, CIO Newell. Okay, so uh, I can see that there's some consternation about how this is going to be allocated. So what we need to know today is whether you want us to include that within. Remember I said program changes uh, are not in the budget, you have to buy them. So if you want finance to do some more work on the actual allocation of it, uh, you have to tell us that yes, you're interested in buying the extension of the mosquito program, and then between uh, Jim and Lisa, they'll look at the, the new data and come back with the actual impact on uh, your areas. So you'll have another shot at it uh, with the new information, but we need to know if, if nobody wants to see the program expanded, then just tell us and uh, they'll reallocate 
uh, how those expenses uh, are applied to the various areas based on the new information, but we would not include the expansion that uh, engineering is requesting. If, if like the extra three or four weeks of the program, that's what they're requesting. Okay, thank you. We have a few more questions here. Director Holmes, you're next, please. Thank you. I'm just wondering what um, opportunity there is for different communities to have different levels of service. I mean, if the communities that like mosquitoes can don't have to pay as much and the communities that don't like mosquitoes can, um, uh, you know, like I know in Summerland, we're happy to pay for that because it's the service that we want. So uh, I, I'm just one. it's because really we're talking about cert different service levels, expectations in different communities. And so how do we address that through the program? Uh, that's a good question, but I think we'd have to turn that to Lisa or Zoe if she's on, whichever one. Hi, uh, yes. The the way it's allocated out uh, right now, it's based on where the where the crew has spent their time. And it's how many site visits that they've gone to different areas, and each of the sites are provided um, as a request. We don't seek them out, people request where they would like us to go. So if there's more sites in Summerland that would like to be included, then that would just be a request to us and then we would include it. Go ahead. So just for clarification, are you saying there's like a one year lag, Lisa, where uh, we respond in a summer and then we base the next year's budget based on that response. Correct. Yes. So, so if I may, conversely, if there's, if you want to pay less, then how do you um, unrequest or something like that? Um, if the, um, Everything is, is like CA Newell said, it's a year behind. The reasons that area, the well, the initial analysis showed that the, some of the service areas increased a lot uh, was because that's where the crew spent a lot of time this year because the mosquitoes were so heavy. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, uh, we're getting uh, some feedback saying that it's based on a three year average of time spent yes it is yeah we have mr cote sitting over in the corner <laughs> <laughs> he's in the corner <laughs> yeah it, obviously it's it's challenging because the um, mosquitoes move around too so yeah. i i would say if if uh, an area director or a, or a participating member in the service uh, wanted us to scale down our response in a certain area our, our staff could try and take that into consideration um, but it would probably show up based on the average over the three years uh, the the actual cost change may not show up for a bit and I wonder what the ramifications would be if an area scales back. And I don't know mosquitoes. I'm sure Zoe could speak to us on this. But are we going to then see greater increases in a region by not treating? Well, if we're responding now just based on complaints or yeah. requests for service, I think a director could put in a request saying, don't come. Don't come. But you may get more complaints then. yeah you'd have to be prepared to receive those complaints okay we have a list of questions um director bush go ahead please yeah so we're not talking about the initial mosquito program what we're talking about here is an increase and i'm against it that's all it is thank you <laughs> okay thank you director bush i'll go to director barkwell microphone on uh, is there any evaluation of the effectiveness of this um, I don't like to make decisions on anecdotal information but I know when we had property in Crow Creek they'd come down and they'd spray in the or they'd uh, do whatever in the puddles and and everything 
And you simply still couldn't go outside at night. Whether there's 100 mosquitoes or 150 mosquitoes around your head, they all came over from Sonoka Park. And the the wild area that's there, they can breed under every tree leaf with a water droplet. Um, I, uh, yeah, I sort of wonder, maybe they had complaints, but the, the spraying was futile, even at uh, um, the north end at Lighthouse Landing. I, couldn't get out of my car one evening for the mosquitoes. I kind of wonder if any amount of mosquito spraying in that area would be effective. And, and how do we make an evaluation on that? So we get a final report each year, Dr. Barkwell. Um, and there are definitely some years that are worse than others, depending on rainfall and accumulated uh, water. So it, it does vary, but yeah, we get a statistical report from uh, the department at the end of each mosquito season. But I mean, you might say, yes, we dealt with the X number of puddles and treatments and everything in the area, but how do we know whether that really did made any sort of, well, you know, we, we can say for sure every mosquito in that puddle died from their treatment, but did it really make a material effect on the comfort of the residences? How do we... How do we know? Just sort of because it's complaint driven or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they when they do their final report, they give us an indication of how many complaints were received during the year and whether it was a good year or a bad year. They do trap them so they know how many are in certain areas. But there, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it is fairly subjective. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, well, hey, thank I, you. Uh, I would be going against an expansion because of the futility aspect of it. Hey, Director Gettins, you're next, please. Uh, thank you to the chair. Um, I'm in favor of the expansion. We have, it was, I have people calling and saying how great it is to go out on their deck because of the program. So, um, but I understand why everybody wants to know more about how they have to pay for it. So maybe once we get that report back, um, from Lisa, then we'll have the data to talk about numbers, but I think we should keep it in for now and, and uh, keep going with it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, thank you. I definitely agree. We we have quite a problem with mosquitoes in certain areas of the region, and I think if we didn't increase or we canceled the program, we'd certainly be hearing from our residents, but um, it would be great to see what this breakdown is when when finance and uh, Lisa rejig the numbers. Director Busher, did you want to speak again or is that a leftover hand? No, I'd like to speak case. again. Yeah, so here again, we're not debating the mosquito program. Um, yeah. It's awesome. Um, I pay more than anybody. I don't have too much of a problem. Well, <laughs> it does hurt, but we're just talking about the expansion here. And so far, uh, I don't think it's needed. Um, but, um, you know, it's up to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe some of our areas should focus also on a, a bat enhancement program. Get some more bat boxes out through the community. Um, they do make a big difference. Uh, Director Barkwell, you have another question? Or is that a leftover hand? Leftover hand? Okay, say, Director Bush, yeah, leftover hand. Okay, so we do have, it has been moved and seconded at this time to, to keep this in the budget. If there's no further questions or comments, I will then call, oh, yeah, I'll call the question then. All in favor? Okay, thank you. Hands could come down. And is anybody opposed? Director Bush, Director Johansson, Director Barkwell, Director Coyne Jr., Director Roberts. Okay, so at this time it carries and it will stay in the budget. Okay, so we'll move on to the next one. Back to you, Jim. Thank you. The next one is parks, trails, and facilities. The proposal is to add a 0.65 FTE for a cost of $36,400, which will be distributed amongst uh, various uh, services. So 
the uh, this one here would be uh, Mark Woods that will be discussing it. If the board needs to hear any more information other than what's provided, Mark is available. Okay, uh, Mark, did you want to give a brief overview? Sure, will. Thanks, Chair. Uh, so this is a an addition to our laborer workforce. We've got four positions that are. Uh, seasonal that start with us in the spring and finish up uh, just last week, actually. Um, so what we're doing is looking to expand the hours by 0.65 of an FTE that would add to that complement. One of the four is a part-time fill-in role. Uh, so, of course, we have a lot of windshield time as we're such a large regional district space. So um, we, we, we need to move our resources around. So uh, in the targeted um, uh, service areas, we, we've, we've, Put the bulk of this to the Similkameen service areas, which is areas BG and Road to Karameas for Similkameen recreation, as well as the pool service. Uh, about a about a day of this will be targeted towards that uh, position. Uh, the rest of which would be moved around throughout all the various service areas that we already service. So our labor crews are not just actually parks, trails, facilities. We also do uh, general maintenance upkeep of sites for our water uh, division as well. So, so they move around a lot. And uh, so we've got quite a, an expansive list of services that fund this position. So the extra 0.65, we think next year in 2021 will help us to meet the needs of what we've established in the last year or two. We have a number of new parks and amenities, washrooms, additional trash cans, and all those need to be uh, provided care and attention. So. Uh, we're looking for 0.65 of an FTE uh, labor position on this one, Chair. Okay, thank you, Mark. I'll go to Director Roberts. Uh, thank you, and thank you for um, to the Chair, and thank you, um, Mark, for that um, explanation. Um, I think I need to do as a director my due diligence um, in regards to time tracker, uh, different kinds of resources, issues that are happening in the midst of COVID. Is this something that can be deferred? Because right now we're looking at a period of time that we're not doing the same kinds of activities um, or are unable to and have a lot less um, pressure on our um, facilities. So that's my question in regards to COVID and the amount of time, especially since we've been able to limp along at the moment prior. We have focused on the core workload of our services and isolated COVID out of this. COVID is obviously pretty specific. Fortunately, we've had ac access to additional funding from the province to bring in uh, to fund extra hours for our crew. So we're anticipating when that goes away, we're still going to have uh, additional workload required for the new services that are coming forward, um, as well as um, the other factor with the Similkameen is we've had contract work there in the past. Um, there's there's always been sort of quote unquote casual labor available. Last year when we uh, had those uh, particular individuals move into the bargaining unit, uh, we we had created a, a, a very part time role which didn't really meet the time allotment, so to speak, that was being spent through the contractor. So. Specifically, the Similkami, this is about its core needs at the facility level and not COVID. Okay, thank you. And I could add that um, with COVID, we've actually, at least in Area E, it seemed to have had a big increase in trail usage and our parks and an increase in the amount of garbage that needed to be removed as people have focused on getting outside to recreate. So we've seen a big increase in what we need to offer for recreation in Area E. I'll go to Director Bush and then Director Coyne Sr. Yeah, so um, I've talked lots with Manager Shuttleworth about this and uh, I'm in favor of it. Um, it seems to be a need for it in, uh, in our area. So uh, I would move this recommendation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Director Bush is moving it. Is there a seconder? Director Roberts seconding. Thank you. And I'll go to Director Coyne Sr. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, this one here I 100% uh, support as the chair just 
mentioned that our usage over here has just been exponential on the trail this year. Uh, also, our rec facilities in Blooming. It's just a very, very busy year. So this one's definitely a uh, good thing for them. Thank you very much. Anybody else with a comment or question? We have a motion on the floor to keep this in at this time. I will call the question then. All in favor? Okay, excellent. Hands can come down. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. We'll go on to the next one, Jim. Thank you. Uh, the next one is for a project manager. The ask is for one additional full FTE. Estimated cost of $83,000, including labor load. And Mr. Woods is here to answer any questions you may have. Okay, thank you, Mark. Are you able to give a brief overview of this request? Yes, thank you, Chair. Yeah, so this is a, a new position as is stated uh, to add to our current complement. We have one project coordinator that works within our community services department that works on a great deal of projects throughout the region. Um, th these are very technical uh, functions. They range from, you know, park projects to um, trail projects. Uh, we, we are undertaking quite a number of those as a result of some sex, successful grants that we've received on the change request form. I listed off a number of those projects. Uh, through our parks commissions, we've we've received a number of requested amenity upgrades, uh, uh, park upgrades, um, and most of those take legwork timelines that uh, are quite broad. We, some of these projects take a year or two, depending on the scope. So this position is going to add to our complement, which is uh, Mr. Doug Reeve, who some of you have met. Um, with the one position, we are certainly limited to be able to accomplish the amount of uh, functions that are coming forward here, uh, projects that are coming forward. Um, so again, the the list of service areas that would be funding this role, that would be receiving the service, uh, are, are is quite vast. Each of our electoral areas are identified, regional trails, the, the bulk of our parks and recreation programs. Um, and due to the number of projects that are forthcoming. We anticipate that with the number of grants that are available, these, these projects will continue. There, as was just stated, there's quite a large appetite for um, um, additional outdoor recreation and upgrades to the local facilities we have already, as well as new uh, acquisitions. We've had a number in the past years, and it, it seems we've got a number of additional acquisitions for park space and public space coming forward as well as public facilities. So with that takes uh, uh, some time to uh, roll through the projects on, on behalf of all the different stakeholders involved. So yes, this is a full-time position. It's a new position working within our function. Uh, it's a uh, uh, all in cost, that's salary and labor load uh, at an estimated $83,000 chair. Hey, thank you. And Mark, can I clarify then um, an example of what you with Doug, he has many projects he's working on. One of them is in Area E, the new washroom and septic system for one of the parks. So when he works on that, he time tracks that specifically then to Area E. Is that correct? That's correct. Each of our projects are time tracked very closely, uh, right from conception to the actual construction phase. Okay, thank you. I'm going to go to Director Bush. Go ahead, please. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, I don't disagree with this, but being because we're suppressed in our area because of COVID, um, we might be better off to uh, postpone this for another year. That's just my idea. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions? Yes, CAO. Uh, I, I, and I don't disagree with that. The only thing I'd say is we get a lot of projects that come up during a year. Um, and for the project manager, they're, they're very flexible. Uh, you know, I think a lot of the time for Doug Reed in 2021, it's gonna be the, the satellite fire hall uh, in area E. If there are any other building projects that come along, uh, Director Bush in your area, there's probably some, I, I think when we get through capital, you'll have a better idea of some of the newer 
uh, projects that are being identified by some of the commissions, but uh, that flexibility in an organization uh, is, it often pays off in the long run. If you don't have a good project manager on a project, you can often end up spending a lot more money uh, out of the capital budget than you would normally. Thank you. I'll go to Director Roberts. Thank you to the chair. Um, follow up to Director Bush, I guess for me as well, like what uh, CAO uh, Newell was stating, my concern comes down, for instance, when we make adjustments and we have made adjustments in staffing, whether or not planning, et cetera, and then we have to go out and get contract services when all of a sudden the, cause the project's before us and then we end up spending more with the contract service. And you know, it is, it is that six to one, half a dozen sometimes, the pre-planning saving money in the long run versus the, uh, you know, the Band-Aid being ripped off today with a cost. So you know, I do understand the um, complexity of it. Um, if these things are tied to the, you know, not only the eventual need, but that we are staring down the barrel at a specific project, um, I'm, I'm supportive. Okay, thank you. Director Obert, go ahead, please. Uh, yes, thank you. And uh, I also uh, am supportive. I just wanted to add a couple comments, and, and I, I agree with this, what the CAO said. Uh, in Area D, a few years ago, when we didn't have Doug Reeve and there was a shortage in, in you know, because of staff changes, uh, we suffered um, some things not getting done. D Doug Reeve ha has been spectacular. The work he's done in our area, every project he's been involved in, I, I think we've had real benefits. Uh, what Director Roberts just said, we, we've, uh, we, I know of specifics where we saved money because of the good work he did that we would not have saved if we did not have a good project manager. And although I sympathize completely with Director Bush's really careful and good intentions about uh, you know, cost and, 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 and savings to, to the rate payer. Uh, I really think this is one of those examples where with the uh, grants coming and with the uh, projects coming that are related to post-COVID recovery and, and the economic uh, impact and the better value to, to everybody, there, there's just an awful lot of upside um, short and long term to, to this uh, way of, of being ready and, and managing projects. Uh, and and uh, boy, if uh, Doug Reeve is an example and we can get another person like that, I think we're going to all be, uh, we will actually be money ahead, uh, not behind. And, and so for, for those reasons, I, I do support it. But I, I just wanted to give a little uh, perspective from our area because we've had maybe more projects in some areas. And so we have, a, uh, we've had some real experience and, and some real benefit. Thank you. Thank you. Director McCordoff, go ahead, please. Um, thank you very much. I think this may be more of a rural issue. However, I am I'm I'm quite concerned and I and I have I don't always do this, but I have to agree with Director Bush um, that uh, that this probably it would be better off looked at next year. I think there's lots of other things that we have been um, we're being asked to contribute to and increases in the budget. And that concerns me because um, I think we all need to look at ways to um, to pull back and be sure that we are comfortable with the money that we spend this year. So I, I could not support this. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna go to CAO Newell. Yeah, so this is strictly a labor charge, so it would only be charged out to those projects uh, that were approved for uh, 2021. So uh, uh, for those uh, directors that uh, have a good understanding of what capital projects uh, you have coming up, uh, those would be the ones that would actually experience the increase. So. Uh, you know, I could, um, you know, we could always revisit this one after we go through the capital budget, uh, but generally our community services department is saying when they look at what they've got 
on their slate for next year, uh, they would be restricted if they didn't have this additional position. Yeah, I'd have to agree. I, I think the board needs to understand that some of the electoral areas we have projects, we have projects that we wanted done a few years ago that can't get done because Doug can only handle so much. And uh, area D, area E, area I, we have a lot of projects. We have parks and rec commissions who keep complaining as to why that project hasn't moved forward and it comes down to staff availability to work on them. So the, this type of position is time tracked to us that are using this individual. And we have, you know, we have grants, we have grant funds and we need to get moving on some of our projects. And uh, I think a year ago or more, I made a comment that could, you know, if we could have a second Doug Reeve, wouldn't that be fabulous? So it is time tracked out to those of us that use the position. Uh, we do have a list of, of more comments and questions. I'm gonna to go to Director Pendergraf next, please. Okay, thank you through the chair. I support this position, but struggling with is the fact that last year we approved a bunch of positions that were never hired. So my memory may be failing here, but I can't remember if we hired someone to do some of this work already from last year that's gonna come on board that we haven't seen yet. I think we need to be refreshed on what we approved last year before we start approving new guys this year, because they're all gonna be hired this year. And then it's a big hit to the budget for future years. So my recollection, that, that is exactly right. We did, we did delay uh, some hirings back in March uh, due to the pandemic and uh, the asset uh, manager was one and uh, because we were showing a deficit uh, in those programs at that time. So we are just in the process of uh, filling that one. We had a solid waste manager position and uh, we are not, uh, we are still not um, hiring on that one. And we, uh, what else did we have that we delayed? Uh, oh, we had a, we had a, a occupational health and safety position that was delayed, um, but we've since hired on that one. Uh, there wasn't anything in the, in the project management line, uh, Director Pendergraft, uh, with more of the internal ones where we were experiencing deficits in those specific services. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Director Barkwell, you're next. I can't say what capital projects we have going on in Summerland, but I'd point out that because of COVID, our parks and outdoor recreational areas are being used more than ever, and it will probably be um, used even after it's over to a greater extent than they have been. So just philosophically, uh, expansion of parks and the things that uh, go towards that uh, sort of uh, area, um, uh, I'm kind of, uh, uh, in support of. Okay, thank you very much. Director Monteith, go ahead, please. Sorry, I've been having huge challenges with technology starting yesterday, so my apologies. Um, I don't know if this was uh, asked earlier, but I'm wondering if there's an opportunity for this position to be contract-based versus a full-time employee. I'm hesitant to commit to future projects when we don't know what those are yet. And I'm wondering if we can address the need for staff with a contract versus a guaranteed employee. Thanks. Mm -hmm. those, those are always tough ones. Uh, you know, there are, there are, I mean, we have sort of contract employees that we, we try to get away with, but Generally, if, uh, if a person, if their sole revenue comes from one source and if they're taking direction uh, from a source, whether you call them an employee or a contractor, uh, the law sees them as employees. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, you know, the, 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 the end point on this is that if, if there's no work, like if in, in some future year, we don't have any capital projects, 
uh, you simply terminate or lay off. That's uh, that would be the the HR practice they would use. Th these aren't lifelong appointments, um, but I would say at this point, what we'd be looking more for would be sort of an employee relationship rather than a contractor relationship. Okay, thank you. Go to Director Bush next. Thank you. So, uh, I appreciate all the discussion and I can see that uh, there's a need for a projects manager and also that because it goes to each project, um, only it only goes to where it's needed. So it's only the areas that are using it pay for it. So I'm in favor and I'd like to move this if it's not been moved already. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director Bush, and I think Director Pendergraft seconding that. Uh, Director Barkwell, is that a leftover hand or did you have an additional comment? Probably a leftover hand, it looks like. Over hand, sorry. Okay, any, that's okay, no problem. Anybody else with a comment or question on this? Okay, it's been moved and seconded. I'll call the question then, all in favor? Thank you, hands can come down. And anybody opposed? Okay, that motion carries. We'll go on to the next one, Jim. Thank you. So the next one is the Samilka Mean Recreation Programmer. The ask is a point four FTE. The impact for the 2021 budget is $25,100. And Mr. Wood's here to give you the rationale. Yeah, thank you, Chair. This is an existing position in the Similkameen Recreation Service Area. So again, that's areas BG and Village Caribbeus. Uh, this is a, a role that's been in place now for one year and has had great success. Uh, the rec programmer does exactly that, develop uh, various recreation and community programs uh, on behalf of uh, the overall service area based out of the Similkameen Recreation Facility. It's currently two days a week and the uh, recreation service manager is recommending that we bring this forward for an additional two days a week to make it a four day a week part time position. Uh, and that's all I have on. Okay, thank you, Mark. I see Director Bush. Go ahead, please. Yeah, so uh, I'd like to move this recommendation and uh, uh, it, it's been off, uh, awesome having this woman there um, uh, encouraging our, um, our recreation and, and um, I hear she's doing a great job. Thank you. Okay, thank you. It's been moved by Director Bush, uh, seconded by Director Roberts. Uh, thank you. Any comments or questions on this? Director Bush, is that a leftover hand? Yeah. Okay. It's moved and seconded. I'm not seeing any other comments or questions. I'll call the question on this. All in favor? Thank you. Hands could come down now. Okay, anybody opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you. So what you're seeing on your screen is the summary sheet uh, from this. Did you have anything to add to that, Jim? Nothing to add. Nothing to Thank add? You. Okay, so uh, of course we have opportunities for this to change in the future. So um, what we're gonna do right now, folks, is take a short break. So refresh your coffees or wash and break. So uh, how about 10 minutes? And then we will resume uh, with budgeting. Thank you, everyone. Okay, we're on mute, no? We'll mute this.
Tyler, can you hear me? Okay, we're unmuted. Um, Director Monteith, you have your hand up. Did you have a question? Hey, Carla, this is not working for me. Everything keeps freezing. I, I just, I don't know what to do anymore. Danny, is there something you can do to help Director Monteith? So, Director Monteith, you're you you can he, he's going to call you, but you can hear okay. 
You're on mute right now. Director Monteith, are you there? She needs to get a good secretary like I have at the city to do all that for her. She needs you to help her, Director Vassar. Yeah. Uh, not in your life. But, um, um, I completely computer illiterate. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, let's uh, go. Director Gettins, you have your hand up? Yeah, thank you. Um, do we have this presentation in our email? No. No. And then the presentation. No, we just got it. The presentation from our strategic planning where Bill had all the list of items that the staff have put together. Do we have that presentation in our email or accessible? No, actually, I just texted you on that. Bill hasn't finished his revisions of strategic planning. Is that the one you're asking about? Yeah, because there were a few um, items that I had emailed Bill earlier around strategic planning, like to talk around uh, about invasive species. And I think at the board, I talked about a communication strategic plan. And I'm just going to, without seeing what's coming up this afternoon, I'm just curious as to when that conversation or discussion is happening. Strategic, strategic planning. Yeah. When are we, I think the question is, when are we coming back to that discussion? Yeah, so I'll incorporate the changes that we got from the workshop, and then uh, we'll bring it back. Okay, and so we'll see that in December? Yeah. Okay, so that'll be back in December, Riley? Okay, and that will include, like, that the list of items that we have put on, like, that we had emailed the bill earlier. Like, I just, like, I haven't seen invasive species come up at all, but that was something that I had put forward to talk about regionally to see if it was an issue for others. So... Is that because we were going to have another strategic planning meeting next week, but that was canceled. So I'm just, that's my question is when do we have time for these discussions? Is that the next board meeting in December? Uh, yeah, I could have it ready by then. Yeah. I think the intent was we were going to see if we could tack it on to a board meeting yeah, day. We can do that. Since we're pulling everyone together for a board meeting and then tack it on to, you know, half a day of, of board meeting. Okay. It would be great to have this presentation and if we can kind of go back one slide on the current slide that we have now because I just I didn't get a chance to read it. It just went by quite quickly. The previous slide. Thank you. Uh, no, the, next so, one. the next one back. Go forward the, one. Forward one. Oh, go the other way. Yeah, there, there we go. go. Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, I get a call. I can send it out now. Okay, Bill's going to send this out to you right now. Okay, and if I could get that list of the strategic priorities that Bill presented as well, I think that would be really helpful just to kind of, it's a good reminder yeah. for what we talk about during the day. Right. Thank okay, you. and that's, you're, you're still tweaking that one, yeah. Bill? So he's still tweaking that, Riley, but he'll get it out as soon as he can? Thanks. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Okay, so are we okay to move forward then? Danny, you're working with Director Monteith, are you? On, or Adams, okay, great. So we'll go uh, back to Jim then. Thank you. So this slide here, just I wanted to do it to show that reasonableness test in that the 2020 budget had 58 million, the 2021 with the asks is uh, at the draft level, 59 million. What's uh, I'm unable to really compare apples to apples because in the RDS budget for uh, operations, it includes capital. So the 51.1 includes capital. That's why I stated, uh, I showed it included. The capital request for 2021, which we're going to discuss shortly, uh, is 13.3 million. Uh, it includes that one number there, included the carry forwards and uh, the capital asks that had to, that are non discretionary. What you're going to see in the, in the next uh, ask are capital projects with funding. Some of them are taxes. Some, most of them are reserves or uh, D DCCs or gas tax. With the, with the new system, the staff's able to project what is available for reserves. So we know that if it says reserves, it's not a hope that we have the reserves. We do have the reserves. 
it says gas tax, it's the same thing. So the only areas that I think a major concern would be for the, the board is when it says funded through taxation, and that's something that would increase the tax requisition. And when we have the one-on-one -on -one meetings, that's where you would take a look at it and see if there's any other way of funding it, which means operational or capital reserves. So that that's where that is. If, have, yeah, if you have any questions, please let me know. Any questions on that for Jim? Okay, not at this time. Okay, Jim, you can move on to the next one. So the ne next sections, the asks are split up by area and there are managers here to uh, answer your questions the source is essentially like i stated it's donations reserves um, gas tax or taxation and the, the first two are the Niramata satellite hall and the okanagan falls expansion as stated Niramata satellite hall is uh, funded strictly with donations and the okanagan falls expansion the reserves there and that ask it's it's for your consideration. And we we don't need a motion on each of these, or do you? Well, um, I'm familiar with the the Near Matter project, uh, Madam Chair, is where that's going. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if Director Obrick is completely familiar with uh, the Okanagan Falls. Uh, this is an expansion to the existing fire hall. Mm -hmm. uh, so if uh, he's good with that going in 2021, uh, we'll just you should for. let us know and we'll okay. put that in the budget. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Director Oberick. Uh, yes, thank you. And uh, I am uh, familiar uh, with, the, uh, with the project. Uh, we are going through, I believe, a change. We, our chief uh, has uh, retired. And uh, I don't know if we have a, a new permanent chief uh, sorted out yet. So I think we leave it on for now. And then as we sort through the budget uh, on the fire hall, which I've seen the draft so far, and we get a chance to confirm with the new chief, uh, we do have reserves. Uh, this is um, uh, an expansion of the existing hall, which would give the fire department uh, more space for equipment, but also some other amenities. So it's a, it is something I'm quite familiar with, but with a change in chief, I think we're going to have to uh, have some more conversation. And you know, later if it's uh, going to be postponed, for example, we can we can take it off. But uh, just for the comfort of the board and and the CAO, uh, I am uh, I am familiar with what the thought process was on this. Thank you. That's fine, Okay, thank you. We'll go on to the next one. Thank you. So this is uh, essentially mostly community services. How does how do you want me to see line by line or just look at bottom line? How, how do you um, want me to we should see? Probably just give a brief description of each project. Okay. So if there's any questions, the managers are, are online to answer your questions. Uh, first one's Heritage Hills, uh, Toolkay Falls Trail, 35,000. Uh, taxation source, uh, KVR, jumping plat. Oh, well, let's, let's sort of do them one at a time. Okay. okay. Any questions on the first one? You can see that's an Area D project. Director yeah. Obert, go ahead, please. Yes, thank you. And, and that's one that I'm not sure what it's about. I, I recognize the words Heritage Hills and OK Falls Trail, uh, <laughs> but I, I don't know what it is. Thanks. Oops. If I could get clarification. OK, do we have Mark yes. on the line? Mark, are you on? Yes, I'm on. So this is a project that was raised by the OK Falls Parks and Recreation Commission. It's a it's a concept. The idea is to develop a trail from Heritage Hills to Okanagan Falls. Uh, so really it'd be a feasibility study to ascertain whether or not that was actually achievable, and if so, how so. Um, there's the majority of lands between those two communities are private. There's some crown land, some uh, road network. Um, so highly conceptual at this point, that cost estimate is a very high level cost estimate that was provided to the commission for their consideration. It's something that our understanding is, is they want to pursue in 2021. So this would be likely a consultant doing a feasibility analysis on the concept. 
Okay, thank you. Director Obert, go ahead, please. Uh, thank you very much. That clarification was very helpful. It has been discussed at the Parks and Rec Commission, and uh, we'll take this back to the Parks and Rec Commission for that part of the budget review. Uh, definitely, there is an interest of having some trail expansion on the east side of Skawhaw Lake. And uh, this number, uh, this, this may be the first time I've become familiar, uh, although it may have come before us last week. Uh, it, 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 in terms of the cost, uh, that's a real interesting number. So that's something the Parks and Rec Commission can, can review, and then uh, it may be something they do or don't want to see pursued this year, but but absolutely, I do know what that is now. Thank you very much. I, 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 I truly wasn't sure, so thank you very much. Okay, thank so you. we've got this identified as a, a taxation, Director Obrick. So would you want us to put this into the Okanagan Falls Parks and Recreation budget for 2021? Uh, when you say taxation, uh, you're meaning in the Parks and Rec budget, this would be a, an increase of 35000 to cover the cost in the budget? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I see the, the thought, and, you know, we can leave it in now and uh, discuss it, but it's a, it's a real good example of uh, what Director Bush talks about because, you know, you want to have things done, but $35,000 is an awful lot of money uh, that may be... Uh, this isn't the right year for it, but it but it's certainly something that fits into strategic planning over time. So it's it's something that has been talked about before, but when you put a cost to it, it really changes the conversation. And I think I just take it back to the Parks and Rec Commission and let them, uh, you know, make some. You know, there, there's only so much money, so the priorities are. Uh, you know, people have to make choices. I think so. But thank you. Yeah, I think for now we leave it in. Yeah, so right now it is not in. So same oh, okay. with program changes. Anything in this capital budget, as we go through all the projects, if you want to buy them, then we'll put it in. So that's what we're after today is do, do we put it in the budget or not in the budget? Okay. Do you, do you want a, a motion now or as a group later? How do you think to proceed on that? I think we do each one. Do okay. we have a motion or we just need the area well, director? We need the area well, director to indicate. Yeah. We need the area I'll, director yeah. to indicate I'll, you want to put I'll, it in. I'll say yes. Okay. There's a yes. Yeah. So this way, Director Ulbrich, you'll see the impact of it. Um, right. In addition to any of the other programs that are coming up. And then at some, uh, at the next meeting, once you see the total impact of the capital projects on your budget, you can say uh, whether you still support them or not. And then we can take them out thank or leave them in. Yeah, thank okay. you very much. And I, I see we have one, two, three, four, five in a row. I'll just say yes mm -hmm. to all five and we can skip them. Oh. And then okay. uh, I'll let the Parks and Rec Commission have a conversation. And, uh, you know, I think it's good for them to uh, pay attention to the cost and then, you know, we'll. We'll, they'll make some choice, some rec advice on choices, and we'll come back. But obviously, uh, when you when you do the math, it, it there's a hundred thousand there, hundred and ten thousand before you blink. Well, hundred and seventy thousand when you pass the master plan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. so Thank Director you. O'Brick's going to have them all added into the budget for now. Uh, did anybody have a question on these Area D projects? Yeah, I'm not seeing any. We can uh, move on to the next ones, Jim. Thank you. Just, uh, yeah. As a segue there. So when we started B, so we didn't see any capital projects under community services in areas A, B, or C. So that's why we're starting at B. Mm -hmm. So if there is something that uh, one of those electoral area directors had thought was on the capital budget and they didn't see, uh, they could just let us know. Um, okay. But otherwise, uh, we're starting at B. Okay, good. And if I may, one other option that is out there is you can also defer that to a, a different year. Mm -hmm. so, so you're not saying no, you're just saying not affordable and move it to, tell me the year that you'd like to move it with a new tracker. It would be very easy mm -hmm. to, to follow. Okay, great. Thank you, Jim. Director Oberk, you have a question? 
Uh, just to comment, but uh, some of these we may or may not have some surplus from last year on things that didn't get done. So it, it, it may look worse than it actually is for taxation. But, but regardless, <laughs> it has to it has to be discussed and planned for. And so so uh, uh, I, I'm looking forward to Jim's help in saving the money somehow. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, on to area E, Jim. Thank you. So area E, Wharf Park development. It, there is money in the capital reserves for this project for $80,000. And, and Mr. Wood is there here to answer your questions. So when we look at this one, are we talking about the upgrades to Wharf Park that are outside of the possible purchase price for the road in between the two pieces from Modi? Is that correct? We have to get Mr. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Have we got any progress with Modi on that road purchase? Uh, we have a meeting uh, scheduled shortly, Madam Chair. <laughs> good. Which is a good it's step. Really take, taking a long time with Modi. Okay. Yeah. So no approvals. Just we we do have a meeting. Yeah. Well, we know. No, they have a, They do have a preferred design. That is a a big step for us. We had three different designs in front of them. And they did, I believe, approve disposal of that piece of road that they could sell it. We don't know what the price is. Is, is that still the issue, Mark? That's all correct. We're waiting a, a, oh. a dollar figure. Yeah. Right. And we do have money in Parkland acquisition that we're holding for that. Hmm. So unless they come up with a astronomical price, which may happen. Okay. Uh, good. We'll keep that there. Uh, so, yeah, structural assessment of war. Sorry, could, could, could oh, you, Jim, go is ahead. That a yes to add yeah. Thing? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yes, there. But if Mark could explain, the next one would be helpful. Mark, the next one's the war structural assessment, fifteen thousand taxation. Yeah. So this is the provincial asset that we hold tenure on uh, at Wharf Park. This is the historical. Um, uh, wharf structure that's just off the beach. Uh, it's requiring, uh, according to the province, is requiring uh, an engineered assessment for its structural integrity. We've put money in the budget because uh, we're in this awkward phase right now with the province with some of the assets that we hold tenure on where historically they have uh, provided upkeep, but most recently in Okanagan Falls Trestle is another example where they're starting to uh, step away from doing any upgrades uh, to their to their amenities. So, uh, and really what that amounts to is if we hold tenure on the asset, it means we own it and have a duty of care to keep it um, safe. Uh, so we're, we're targeting $15,000 to undertake this assessment. So we have a, a very good clear picture of what's needed to keep that asset in place. It obviously has significant heritage values to the community. Uh, so this is to give us a better picture of what's required moving forward. Madam Chair. Okay, so thank you, Mark. So that fifteen thousand is only to assess, or is that including some money for upkeep or repairs? Uh, that'd be for the assessment. Um, it's unknown what the upkeep and repairs would be, so that could be a modest amount. But the assessment itself is the fifteen thousand dollars. So the fifteen thousand seems a little bit high to me to assess that dock. Have we done these before? Or do we know that that's what the cost will be for an assessment? That's our that's our estimate based on other examples. If it, if we can do it for less money, we certainly will. Right. Okay. Thank you. We'll keep that in. And may I, may I have the option of if it's affordable under operational reserves to use operational reserves rather than taxation, or do you want to? Leave it to taxation. Well, it would be nice to do it under operational reserves if we have that option. Okay. So we have our one on one. I can. Yeah, we'll go over that one on one. Thank you. Thank you. So the, the last one on this page is Manitou Park boat storage, twenty thousand dollars, and it's funded through gas tax. And it is correct. You do have the funds for that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll keep that as is. Thank you. Um. Any questions on area E projects? Um, the only thing that um, I'm not seeing 
and Mark could answer this. Right now, we're in the middle of the Manitou Park in Area E washroom and septic upgrades, and we, we have a grant for that. We also have a grant to do solar lighting, and that lighting is primarily for the walking path that will wrap around the park. Um, and we were, I believe, short on funds out of that grant. Things always cost more than we thought. So we need to have for 2021 the walking path work done. And I believe we were going to look at the uh, gas tax funds. Is that correct, Mark? And do we need to put this on here? Uh, that's correct. It's it, we didn't add it in as the, a new capital item because it's coming forward from last year. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's a carry forward and they wouldn't be on right. the list. Okay, so it's it being a carry forward, it's still happening. It's just not on this list as a, as a new item. Okay, Correct. thank you for that clarification. Oh, hello, Miss Judy Sentis has come mm -hmm. into the room. Were you having technical difficulties? Yeah. Yes. I, I could only get it on here. Oh. Uh, it kicks me out. It says my uh, um, password is incorrect. Oh. So I just got tired of okay. looking at it. Welcome, Judy. Sorry. No problem. Okay, so were there any questions on the Area E projects on this list? Okay, on to Area F. Thank you. Area F, uh, Mariposa Park uh, Development Plan, $15,000 funded through taxation. Mr. Wood, go here to answer your questions. Mr. Woods, did you want to just tell us quickly what that project is? Sure, yeah. So Mariposa Park is uh, uh, a long time existing park up on the West Bench, uh, west side of Penticton within Area F. Um, it's been in place quite a long time, so a number of the amenities are uh, looking for some upgrades. So the Parks Commission and staff met and discussed options and how they move forward. We thought the best step would be to um, bring a consultant to develop a, a development plan for that entire space. Uh, currently, there's uh, tennis courts and pickleball courts and quite a large expanse of grass area. Uh, some older buildings, uh, washroom buildings and a large parking area. So the, the goal here is to develop a long-term uh, master plan for moving forward. Okay, thank you. So uh, go to Director Gettins. Are you wanting to keep this in? Um, yeah, is this new from the last? Park and Rec Commission committee meeting because I don't recall the committee, the commission wanting to bring in a consultant. Yes, this was from the last meeting they had where they uh, decided on which items they want to move into 2021. There may have been some thought that by developing a plan, we would do that in house, but for for this type of work, we would would go out for that. Oh, I thought the plan was just to remove the cricket pitch. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not sure. I mean, if you can leave it in now, but I'll I'll check back on my notes. But I, sure. I didn't recall hiring a consultant to develop a plan because we had talked about a lot of things, like with the tennis courts and the pickleball and everything. So perhaps I'm missing something, but leave it in, and then I'll I'll follow up with the commission. Sure. Okay. Any questions on that project? Okay, I think it moves us to area I, Jim. Thank you. Pioneer Park waterfront development, $60,000, and looking at funding it through taxation. Okay. Mark's here to yeah, Mark, we, a little we, brief update. Sure, yeah, there's been a number of work done at Pioneer Park in the last two years, uh, Madam Chair, uh, specifically the bolt launch, a uh, very large, expansive parking area, a number of small upgrades to the facilities. Uh, along the waterfront, which is all crown land, uh, up to RDUS owned land just up off the foreshore, uh, there's there's been quite a uh, uh, a lot of it fill brought in over the many years. So it doesn't make for a very pleasing beach experience. So the commission has very interested in trying to reclaim some of that beach space. But with anything riparian adjacent to the water, it takes a number of uh, permits and steps that are required through various provincial agencies. So this project is the, we'd call it the redevelopment of the waterfront in front of Pioneer Park, uh, which would result in uh, achieving a, a much larger beach area, but still uh, maintaining the required riparian plantings and with no net loss to any of those uh, particular species that are there. So uh, 
pretty big project, uh, which would start out uh, at the plan development components and then moving right into construction all within that $60,000 uh, budget, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. And I, I do have a text from Director Montes. She's been having some problems with raising her hand or speaking. So uh, maybe we could hear on the other area I project and then we'll see if we can get Director Monteith in. Otherwise she's gonna text me her answer. So let's look at the next one. Again, okay. area I community, community hall development expansion, $22,000. Mark, if you could expand on that. Yeah, the Caledon Community Hall is uh, about a 70 year old facility that was built uh, by the community um, Clean Community Association that long ago. It's been looked after by the community for uh, all that time. In the past year, the regional district, we've always had a role with the, with the association, um, assisting in funding and, and management of the site. Uh, it did receive a significant uh, upgrade renovation about five years ago, uh, but they've got on their list now that they'd like to do some additional uh, renovations to the kitchen storage area, including a uh, um, a, more, a more thorough building assessment of some of the spaces that were yet to be looked at. So this is a, an amount of money that the community uh, club, as well as the Parks Commission, have, have asked for to undertake that work. Okay, thank you. So we'll see, uh, Director Monteith, are you able to let us know if you'd like these to stay in under taxation? Can I be heard? Yeah, did I yeah go ahead. Yay! Okay, maybe I was magical. Um, Mark, could you explain the works on the Pioneer Park waterfront development, just so that anybody that listens to this understands what the plan is versus uh, hearing waterfront development and being concerned? I Yeah, I did. I provided an explanation. Did you not hear that? I, I'm happy to repeat it. No, I, I know what it is, and I know that it's stabilizing the foreshore. Is that correct? Yes, that'd be certainly part okay. of it. Yeah. I think that maybe wording that so that it's um, it's not waterfront development because I think the community would be concerned about that language being used. Um, yeah, but, yes. Sorry, go ahead. I, I just want to say that the, certainly the slide is quite simple, but we've got a, 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 a much broader explanation and description that we can provide as well. No, I understand. For, yep, for I understand. like both of those projects are wanted by my community. Thank you. Okay. Great, thank you very much, Director Monteith. Did anybody have any questions on those area I projects? Okay, I'm not seeing any. We will move on to area H. Area H, Colmont Park plan development, $17,500 and funding will be taxation in this case. And Mark, if you wanna give us some more detailed information. Sure. Yeah, the Coleman Park uh, was uh, an acquisition the regional district made through a donation uh, approximately three years ago, uh, two to three years ago. Um, it's a large parcel of land situated right in Colmont, adjacent to the former Kettle Valley Railway. In fact, that's actually uh, a large asset that was originally owned by the KVR, uh, then went through the Crown, then private property, and then to the regional district. Uh, so working with the community in the past year, we had a number of... Um, engagements with them to come up with a concept so the plan itself is in place this is really more about the development of the plan and implementing some upgrades to the local park from signage and uh, benches and and, and and gazebos and so it, it's a nominal amount of money and i'm sure that the director's aware of what his community is looking to upgrade so this is making sure that we've got some money in, in place to undertake works at that site madam chair okay thank you uh, director bob Coyne. Do you like to keep or add this to your budget through taxation? Yeah, we'll go ahead with both of those two. Okay, excellent, thank you. Um, uh, Mark, did you want to give an explanation then on the next one under gas tax funding? Sure, so at the uh, community of Tulumi, just west of Colmont, there is a outdoor rink facility that's owned by the regional district. It sits adjacent to the fire hall, so there's quite a large uh, piece of land there that the community uses. Uh, the, the rink itself is in need of some upgrades, so we're going to redo the, the boards on that space, is my understanding, and uh, some other uh, minor upgrades to the public washroom facility that's situated on the same site. Okay, great, thank you. So Director Bogpoint is including this then for his budget yep. next year. 
Thank you. Any questions on these Area H projects? Okay, I'm not seeing anything. So back to you, Jim. Thank you. The next one is a Samilkameen Rec Center upgrade. It's 171,000. I'm pleased to say that there's enough capital reserve funds to fund the project completely. And Mark, if you want to give some more information. Yeah, the Samilkameen Recreation Facility had a building assessment undertaken this year, uh, which provided uh, us with a long list of projects that were required to bring it up to standard and um, uh, keep the keep the facility going. Uh, so this is wrapping up a number of small pro projects that uh, will be undertaken in 2021 with the uh, approved budget. Everything from uh, the heating unit replacement to replacement of some windows, looking at doing some exterior cladding of the facility, uh, and then some uh, other upgrades to the amenities in the adjacent area, like the rink itself and um, doing the paint out of the, the surfacing. And um, so quite a number of small projects that are wrapped up into this large amount, amount here. Okay, thank you. I see Director Bush has a comment. Go ahead, please. Uh, yes, I'm good with this um, number. Okay, thank you. Uh, Director Roberts. I am as well. Okay, thank you. So this is um, the B, G, and Karameas. Okay, how about Director Bauer? Are you good? Maybe he's having a nap. No, if you had seen my uh, monitor, which is on the, you would have seen my thumbs up, but I guess, <laughs> you know, slightly impaired on the vision there. We Thank can you. only see you when you're speaking because we have a slide on the screen. Oh, so I see. So you just bump to the top because you spoke. Otherwise, I can only see your name. Okay. okay so you're so good with this? I'm good with that, and we maybe uh, use some of that recovery uh, fund that the province put out to upgrade our IT system, eh? Yes, we'll have to have a discussion on the recovery fund money and how that is used and divvied up um, with the electoral areas, I would think would want some priority treatment, being that municipalities received their own chunks of money, but we should have a discussion about technology upgrades for the board in general. Okay, so we're all good with uh, BG Karameas on the rec center upgrades. So we can go to the next one, Jim. Samilkameen swimming pool renovations, 20,401. And again, it's uh, funded solely through reserves. So it doesn't affect taxes. Okay, did Mark? we, yeah, Mark, go ahead, please. Yeah, this is the 2021 portion of the project. In fact, there's uh, $145,000 that's sitting in reserves that was will be a carry forward from 2020. Uh, the Similkami pool is situated on, on Karamea's own lands just across the street from the village office. Uh, it's a, a long-standing uh, pool. It's in dire need of some renovations. We've been keeping it up over the past years. And uh, we are just in the process right now. One, the significant project the community was interested in was a brand new pool. Uh, so grants were requested uh, and we were turned down, unfortunately. So we've come up with a renovation of the existing facility, uh, which this would also be grant funded. We've, we've current, this is our portion. It's a 70-30 it's a split with government through the ICIP program. So if successful, this is the local uh, portion that would be used to upgrade the existing pool in Karameas, as well as renovating the space around the pool itself, like the change rooms and bathrooms. Okay, thank you. Director Roberts, go ahead, please. I'm good with it. Okay, thank you. Director Bauer? Yeah, I'm good with it too. So Mark, uh, that includes the uh, pool liner. And uh, I just wanna say that is a shared service between uh, Kermius area B and G? Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. And Director Bush? Yes, yeah, same thing. I'm in favor. Okay, great. Anybody have any questions on uh, the, these two Samilkameen projects? Okay, looks good. We'll move on to the next one, Jim. 
Thank you. Corporate office renovations, uh, $72,000. There's funds and reserves to fund the whole project. And again, Mark, if you want to give some update. Yeah, this is uh, these two items, corporate office renovations and shared facilities plan. Madam Chair, I'm, I'm asking that we strike those later in the slides. We've actually got the items broke out. Um, so we've got a duplication. The shared facilities plan is a leftover from our document from last year, which was going to be a broader review with the city of Penticton. So that's no longer happening. So uh, if we can just strike that $72,000 item and $80,000 item. Rotate both off. Correct. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Uh, Director Gettins, you have a question? Thank you. So, Chair, I just want to confirm, are these currently with the budget that we're looking at right now, or are these items being added to the individual area budget? Well, can you scroll that down, Danny? Here we go. No, no. Just, uh, sorry. No. I guess we didn't get all of the slide on. Okay. There we are. Yeah. Um, yeah, just there's one below that, Danny. Yeah. Just one line. Can you, will, will that PowerPoint slide on right in the right hand side of the screen? Like, there I did it. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead, uh, Jim. Are you able so to answer, to answer that question? Yeah. Once the board approves these capital requests, yes, they will go into the individual budget lines for the, the department service departments. Okay. Was thank that the you. question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank the you. The question is these are not in the current budget that we're looking at right now, and they're now going to be added to the parks and recreation or wherever they need to go, individual budget. Correct. Thank you. So, Mark, just to be clear, so what you were saying take off both the cap, the corporate office renovations and shared facilities plan? Yes, that's correct. They come up uh, in three, four, four slides later as broken out items. In uh, slide 24. Broken out. Is what he's saying. Is that correct? I, I, can, is that I can speak to them if you want to go to slide 24. I can speak to them. Uh, wow. Why don't we keep you hanging yep. until we get there to keep us in sequence? Okay, so those two come out though. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay, next, Jim. So, Milkamine Trailhead signage $30,000 funded through taxation. Mark? Yes, this project we've had on the books we've carried forward for two years. This is a uh, this is for all of our KVR and Smoke Mean Rail Trails trailheads. Uh, we've got a, a very very nice concept sign which is going to be uh, really welcoming all of our visitors that use the assets so they know they're on one large trail network. Uh, we we did this in consultation with a few other agencies like uh, Thompson Economic Tourism Association. We're speaking with them and of course our partners, the Rec Sites Trails BC. We maintain quite a vast network of signs throughout the 230 kilometers plus that we have, but we want to have some some uh, continuity with those trailheads, uh, just to really showcase the fact that it's a, a full regional network of trails. So the concept's been developed. The signage is uh, ready to be tendered out. We deferred on it because we're trying to get matching funds. We've had a couple of opportunities to come up, and and they've not come to fruition. Uh, so, in fact, we have another one in the works right now with uh, with the province of BC uh, to try and match these funds. So we're asking to carry forward this amount again for a third year uh, so that it's available for us to double that money uh, should we proceed with the project. Okay. Uh, Director Roberts, go ahead, please. Thank you to the chair. Um, if I'm to understand what Mark was saying there, is that this is in regards to trailhead signage throughout the system. However, in the project, it has $30,000 just for the Similkameen trailhead. So, um, one in clarity on that? Yeah, I think perhaps we've uh, we've mistakenly added Similkameen to the 
front end of that. It really should be the Similkameen and KVR trail networks. KVR, of course, is uh, specifically up through the South Okanagan and then up uh, area F and H. And as we know, the Similkameen trail network, we don't refer to it as the KVR because it's the Burlington Northern system. Uh, so it's, it's all the all the trail network itself. So uh, apologies for that mistake. Thanks for that clarification, Mark. So is this out of regional trails? That's correct. Okay. Um, Director Coin Jr., go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you. So, Mark, is this 30000 only half of the amount of money you need, or do you need, like, what's the final price tag on your signage? We, we'll, we'll tender this out to get the best price we can get. Um, so this is proposing to have, I believe it's five signs if we get the, at $60,000. And we would keep going. We'd expand on that as we, as we, as we can afford it. Okay. Right. Are there any other questions or comments on this one? Or anyone who feels that this should be removed? Okay, it looks like we're okay with this. Oh, Director Coyne Jr. Yeah, sorry. So, how many how many areas would total? Would everybody be part of this, Mark? Um, like, would every every region benefit from the signage? Yeah, the trails program is region wide. It's all of our jurisdictions, and the intention would be to have uh, at, at least one, if not more, trailhead signs throughout each area. Uh, obviously, that's highly dependent on where we have. So for example, Vassa, we know at some point we'd like to have a, a trail network going through there. So we wouldn't put one of these in place until we had all of our tenure. Uh, so today we we have tenure throughout um, area E, F, H, uh, D, I, uh, B, G, Karameas, um, we are now working with Summerland, so we'd see perhaps a sign there on the west side. So there's, we've mapped out where we would propose to have trailhead signs, and we'd work towards that. This is our first iteration toward it. So I guess my follow-up to that would be, why don't we just put the full cost in and get it done? Because every year we put this off, the price is just going to go up and up, and it seems like that's something that's going to benefit you know, the entire region. Plus, it's a tourism, you know, opportunity here too. So, I see yeah. an economic benefit to it. But if we keep putting it off, we're missing that economic benefit, and the price is going to go up. We could certainly cost the full scope of work and add that. Okay, so is that something then we'll hear back uh, from you, Mark, next time as to what that full cost would be? Yes, we could do that, Chair. Okay, thank you. Director Roberts, go ahead, please. Thank you to the chair. Just a quick question too. Um, understanding that when we talk about all the trails, the, the main trail, well that also, you know, all trails that are dealt with with the RDUS, I do believe we do some financing with Penticton, the PIB with the channel, is that tied to it? Or is that a, is that a different um, trail system because uh, again, I, I just found out about where that sat with some finances, and, I, and I'm not clear on um, what is specifically um, our trail in regards to the regional trail plan, if that's just what goes through PIB land through the Kettle Valley, or whether or not there's um, additional trails um, in different communities. The, the KVR and, well, the regional trail network itself, based on the Trails Master Plan, we focus entirely on former railway corridors. So there, so those net, the network itself is off-highway wherever possible. With the PIB section, that piece of KVR is still under an additional reserve process through the federal government, which will revert back to the Pendicton Indian Band at some point. Meanwhile, the Okanagan River Channel Trail, which is very widely used, uh, was used as our what we call a bypass trail. So where we can we can navigate people off of a section of KVR or uh, Smokamine Rail Trail onto a safe 
passageway other than highways, we will do that. In the case of PIB, they, there was a, a financial um, agreement in place until last year. Uh, that agreement was up and it was not renewed. We weren't asked to renew it, but we've kept the fund in place should they ask us in 2021. Uh, just as a side note, uh, but we will always focus our attention on our primary network of re regional trail, which is the KVR trail and the Burlington Northern Railway Trail. Okay, thank you. Anything further on this one? Okay, back to you, Jim. Thank you. White sand campground, fifty thousand dollars, and gas tax is uh, the funding source. Mark. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm not overly familiar with these two projects. They're projects that came forward from uh, Director Coyne, uh, but I, what I'm aware of is the White Sand Campground is a parcel of land that's uh, situated just east of Colmont. It's a it's a provincial asset. It's uh, immediately adjacent to the KVR Trail, and widely used by uh, area residents and visitors. Uh, so the intention here, I think, is to support the provincial government in, a, in the development of that site, as well as the Martin Lake Rec Site Shelter, which is a current provincial rec site. Uh, and that's a very specific project targeting uh, a shelter structure to be put in place on that location. Okay, thank you. I'll go to uh, Director Bob Coyne on these. Yeah, Mark's got it. Pretty right on there. Exactly what what he just said. The, the White Sands Campground is a has been a ongoing issue. The uh, Sites and Trails is willing to partner with us on it, and uh, it, it'll become a, a, a managed site. So this is a really good thing as far as Martin's Lake Rec Site Shelter. That's a project that's left over from last year. This year with uh, COVID, we couldn't get any contractors to come out and build it. So we're hoping to get that done next year. Thank you. Okay, great. So we'll put those in with gas tax funding. Any questions? Director Spencer Coyne, go ahead, please. Yeah, I, I just want to say that this would be a, both of these projects are, are great for the region. Um, White Sands is becoming more and more popular as a, as a campsite. Uh, this summer we've seen probably hundreds of people use that campsite. So, you know, support for this would be pretty, pretty good around here. Uh, Martin's Lake, um, with the development that's happened out there in the last, you know, couple of years, Martin's Lake has become quite the um, recreation area for the community. So it's the only lake that's right beside the town and, and everybody here would strongly support those. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments on these? Okay, thank you. We'll go back to Jim to move on to the next slide. Thank you. So the next one's asking for 227,000 for the SCADA master plan. Now, later on, you're going to see a, an additional ask from IT for SCADA. It is not a duplication. It's just a, a means that the IT has to have a different type of equipment, technical equipment to make the SCADA master plan work. So this one here, I would look forward to Andrew to explain more. Okay, before we go to Andrew, I see Director Gettins has a hand up. Was there a question, Director Gettins? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, with that planning for Mariposa Park, can that be paid for by gas tax because it's community planning or does it have to go through taxation? I will go to Mark. I, I can ask. Oh, okay, Jim, go ahead. Gas tax is, uh, could be funded through gas tax, yes. Okay, so Director Gettins could switch that to gas tax yes. if available. Thank you. Okay, can I make so, that? Um, do we know if, if Mariposa Park Development oh, Plan? I've got it. And, and she has available gas tax funds? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yes, so, she does. Great, so Director Gettins, we're going to change that to say gas tax. Thank you. Right, you're good. Good. Okay, thank you. And I see Director Bush has a hand up. Go ahead, Director Bush. Can I just ask what SCADA means? Oh, okay. We're getting we're getting there. Um, so supervisory uh, control and data acquisition. It's sort of a water system, wastewater treatment, master control where 
if a pump goes off, uh, our guys get notified electronically. Saves a lot of time and wasted call outs and, and uh, a downtime. Okay. I think we were just going to head off to Andrew now to give an overview on this. Go ahead, Andrew. Uh, sure. Actually, I think probably Lisa is the one that's in charge of this. So um, maybe Lisa, if you want to chime in. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, basically, it's looking at uh, replacing some of the control equipment. Majority of it is at the Naramata water treatment plant because that's one of the hubs for our SCADA system. And specifically, there's um, some PLCs, programmable logic controllers, which are vital for the, uh, the system to work. And it's the replacement of those over the next two years. Okay, thank you. So the source says water. It, I'm missing a word. It, it would be water reserves. Reserves. Okay, good. Okay. Any questions on this? Oh, just to clarify that. So we have nine water systems. Um, so some may have reserves and some may not. Same. same. Uh, so that would depend. And the ones that don't are fairly small, and they would have a small portion of charge to them. Right. Okay. So this is split out based on the size of the system. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions from the directors? If I may, Lisa, the smaller systems, would they also have this data or, or not? Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, the smaller systems do have SCADA, but these particular upgrades over the next two years just involve uh, primarily Naramata and a little bit of West Bench. Ah, okay, so we are the pairs, area E and F. Okay, any, any questions or concerns with this? Director Gettins? Um, no, I don't have any concerns. I think that it's it's helpful and it cuts down on staff time is what my understanding is. Right. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, we'll go on to the next one, Jim. Missoula Lake Water Quality Review, $17,000 funded through taxation. Okay. Lisa or Andrew? Yeah, I can speak to that one. So what this is, is a, um, we found um, blue-green algae in our um, uh, water system uh, this year. Uh, blue-green algae is a, as a toxin. And so this is really a requirement from IHA to look at um, uh, water quality over the next uh, year. Uh, to and this speaks to the viability of um, of Missoula Lake as a water source. Okay, thank you. Anything from Director Bob Coyne? You're, are you okay with this? Absolutely. <laughs> Good, thank you. We got no choice on this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Anybody else with a question or comment? Okay, hey, we'll uh, move on to the next one, Jim. Lift station number three upgrades, $40,000 funded through reserves. Okay, uh, so. Yeah, so that is a carry forward. Yeah. Uh, so we'll just provide oh, well, yeah, it's, not, the screen here. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it uh, got, it's not on the okay. screen. Oh. Okay, so that was a carry forward, CIO said. Okay. So we'll move on to Chain Lake Dam. So the next one is Chain Lake Dam study, gas tax funding, $150,000. Okay. Andrew, are you speaking to that one? Uh, probably Lisa on this one. Okay. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, the Chain Lake Dam study is a legislative requirement um, to look at something called a dam safety review. And this is required at the Chain Lake Dam. And this, uh, this is an estimate of the funds that might be required but uh, we're going to be putting it out for um, 
for RFPs in the new year. Okay. And I'm sure Director Bob Coyne is thrilled with this one. <laughs> Absolutely. This one here, we haven't got any choice in the matter and it may cost a lot more than this when we're all done. So this is a jumping off. Hopefully we can alleviate some of the other ones if, if this works out. Yeah, we were trying to not take ownership of this, weren't we? Yep. We were, we were told we are owning it. Okay, thank you. Next up. The next Jim. one is the Willowbrook Wellhead Protection, 122,000, and it's funded through gas tax. Andrew, is this you? Uh, probably Lisa again. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, this was um, this is more than just a Willowbrook Wellhead Protection Plan. It's also to look at uh, designing the uh, reservoir upgrades for a future grant application. Uh, to have a shovel ready project for it um, is definitely beneficial for the water system. And we're also going to look at some other key uh, upgrades that might be needed around the system. So this is uh, what this is, is gas tax money that was not spent last year because we ended up getting a grant for the Willowbrook chlorine contact project. So this money, instead of being used for that, is going to be used for other upgrade opportunities at the system. Okay, thank you, Lisa. I'll go to Director Canodal. Outstanding Are you okay with this? Yes, it's an outstanding program. I support it 100 percent. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Anybody have any questions, concerns with this? Okay, thank you. We'll go to the next one. Okay, Falls Wastewater Treatment Plant Generator, seventy thousand dollars, and this one's funded through reserves. Okay, and are we going to Andrew on this? Yeah, I can speak to this. Um, so this is an existing generator, um, and this is um, just at the Cedar Street um, uh, pump station, which is our, I guess, where all the sewage um, goes to. Uh, essentially, uh, the generator is at the end of its loose, useful life and uh, needs to be replaced. Uh, the cost to um, uh, keep fixing it uh, really don't make sense and the um, uh, it doesn't meet uh, electrical code at this point. Okay, thank you. Uh, Director Obrick, are you supportive of this? No, he's unmuted according to the screen. Are I'm, you there, Director I'm here. Obrick? Yeah, I'm here, there but you. I had trouble with my button. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I'm fine with it, yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have a comment or question? Okay, Jim, we'll go on to the next one. So next one's the half ton uh, truck and utility trader, $40,000 funded through the equipment replacement reserve. And this one goes to Mark. Okay. Yeah, thank you. This is a 2008 Ford that we've had in place now for uh, 312 kilometers. So just going through our, we use it within our parks and facilities fleet. Um, so we're we're up above our 35 point condition rating at 38.6. Uh, it's actually one of uh, three trucks that are there, but we're just bringing this one in uh, with a request uh, to replace it through our uh, vehicle reserve manager. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions or concerns on this? Okay, so it looks like we're going to proceed with that. Okay. Next one, Jim. So the next one's a landfill fence cameras, Karamias and, and Oliver, it's a security issue. Uh, and it's funded through reserves, $60,000. Okay, thank you. Uh, any concerns with this one? Is everybody supportive of this? Director Gettens, go ahead, please. Um, thank you. Is it is this a security system? Is that what this means? 
and the fencing around those two landfills, Karameas and Oliver, and then cameras uh, for security, yeah. Okay. Is there a lot of theft at the landfill? Probably more damage, but there, there, uh, there is a uh, theft, yeah. We do get, we did have theft of metal before. At Campbell Mountain. Campbell Mountain landfill. Okay, thanks. Okay, anybody else? Okay, we will put that in then. Go to the next one, Jim. And the next one, it's a Campbell Mountain Landfill Operations Closure Plan, $120,000, and it is funded through reserves. Okay, Andrew, did you want to fill us in on this one? The, um, this one would be Lisa as well. Okay, sorry, Lisa, go ahead, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, every 10 years we have to update the operation or design operations and closure plan for a landfill. It's time to redo uh, Campbell Mountains. We're also going to expand the scope of the actual report uh, to look at a master plan. Basically, because of the purchase of the 1313 Grayback Mountain Road, it changes how we want to operate this, the whole landfill. So that's part of what uh, we'll be looking at next year. Okay, thank you. Any comments or questions on this? Okay, so everyone's good with that. Thank you. Uh, next one, Jim. The next one is what we were previously discussing with Mark, and that's uh, the first one would be the facilities master plan. And Mark may want to talk uh, about them all together, the, the four. Mark? Yeah, so these are the items that we talked about uh, a few slides back that we struck out. Uh, we we broke these out. So for 2021, we've and and CAO discussed this with you at the last budget meeting, talking about where we're going with our facilities. Uh, so this is a thirty thousand dollar amount we're proposing to have a consultant come in and undertake a feasibility study for us and develop a master plan, a master vision for where we're going with our facilities. So that'll include anything from um, site assessments to the staff. Uh, surveying and needs assessment for the, the current staff that are in those locations, uh, doing building reviews of what we have uh, and assessing whether or not it meets our requirements now and moving forward. Uh, we're targeting, uh, I believe it's a 25 year life plan. So uh, it'll give us a good outlook for many, many years to come. Primarily we'll look at the 101 Martin Street corporate head office uh, for its viability for moving forward and the options for the board to consider uh, from uh, finding additional space in the location to renovating the space we're in. So uh, this is a project that we're um, actually getting prepared to get out the door immediately, Chair. Uh, so once the um, pricing comes in, uh, if the board chooses this amount, would uh, be what we're targeting to cover that cost. Okay, thank you. Are there any uh, questions or comments on this? I'm not seeing anybody, so we'll leave that in. So that takes care of the four. Oh, there's accessible doors. Okay, so Mark, want to talk about the accessible doors for 20,000? Yeah, so 101 Martin Street, when we had our building assessment undertaken this year, one of the items that came forward was, uh, two, or two items actually, um, the skylights, which is two items down. Both of those were identified as uh, as having issues that are starting to fail. Those are our, uh, uh, our handicap accessible doors at the, at the front of the office. <clears throat> and so what we've done is uh, targeted an amount of money to replace those doors as well as uh, accessible doors on our two uh, primary washrooms at the front of the office. So those are uh, the replacement of four doors uh, to gain accessibility uh, for all of them. Uh, and jumping to the skylights, uh, that, which was part of the same assessment, we've, we've actually got uh, skylights that are located in the central uh, portion of 101 Martin Street, which in fact we have uh, some plastic covering some of the areas, so they're in dire need of replacement at this point. Uh, so as much as we're looking at where we're going to go in the future, we've got some immediate needs uh, that we've identified there with the skylights. Okay, any questions there? I see Director Bush. Go ahead, please. Yeah, so is it um, any um, grants we can apply for as well? 
for accessibility? Uh, yeah, great question. We will certainly look, uh, we, we haven't yet, um, but uh, we always try our best to get grants where we can, but we can, we can certainly look into that from an accessibility perspective. There's a good possibility of that. Thank you. Any other comments or suggestions? Okay. Thank you. We'll go on to the next one. Board room chair, $7,500, and that will be taxation. Mark? I'm not sure what else to add to that. Just the replacement of the chairs that are situated in the boardroom, which we, we know have uh, come up uh, for discussion in the past. Uh, they are uh, uh, getting a little old, uh, so we've costed uh, new chairs, a typical chair that we're used to using uh, throughout our corporate offices. Um, and yeah, it's pretty straightforward, just a replacement of all the chairs within the boardroom, Madam Chair. So I have a little bit of concern with this one. Um, I'm sitting in one of the chairs. It seems fine to me. And uh, in 2021, there's a good chance we may not be back in this boardroom much. And I would suggest that, that we don't do that in 2021, that we hold off and, and see, because I don't have an issue with the chairs at all. So I, I don't know what I'm missing on this, but let's hear from some others. Uh, Director Roberts, go ahead, please. Thank you to the chair. And um, yeah, I, I do like the other chairs that they have in the other parts of the building, but as yourself stating, Stated, I don't believe that maybe we need to do it in 2021 with the amount of times that we're doing it from home. And um, I could always get a nice cushy uh, uh, pillow to put on my chair instead of whining and complaining at myself. Thank you. Yeah, I think this chair that I'm in is better than my home office chair. So <laughs> I'm okay with it. Uh, let, we've got quite a few hands up on this topic. Director Bush, you're next. Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't see any need for a new chair. Good, thank you. Director Canodal, how about you? I know you're not using these. No, you, they fit me fine, but I just want to confirm that uh, that's a price for all the chairs and not like Vancouver where it's a price per chair. <laughs> It's the price for one chair for the chair. No, I think it is the whole boardroom, right, Mark? That's correct. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, Director Monteith. To the chair, can we make a motion to have that removed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, would you like to make, make that, that motion? motion? Okay, Director Sentis is here. She's seconding that. Um, and we had, I had Director McCordoff for a comment. Uh, I certainly go along with, uh, with what has just been recommended. I don't think we, I think we can postpone this to a future time because we're not using those chairs often right now. Thanks. Thank you. And then uh, Director Obrick, you had a comment? Uh, yes, and thank you. And I have not had any uh, problems with the chair in that room, and it is better than the chair I have in my home office. I think this is a trick just to see if we're paying attention and well, well done. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, it might, it might be a trick. Um, I, I agree on delaying this. I'm not even sure if 2022 would, would need new chairs. We'll have to see what comes forward um, at the end of next year. So, um, forward a motion, Madam Chair, to never bring this forward again. <laughs> <laughs> so I see some hands have popped back up. We do have a motion on the floor to remove this from our budget. So um, Director Monteith, did you have a further comment or is it just a leftover hand? I can't lower my hand. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're just going to say you're in favor of whatever motion is. If you're not, you got to tell me that your hand is stuck. Uh, Director Roberts, how about you? You have a comment? Yeah, just to follow up. Um, I had um, had we have a pre-existing um, back issue, so the chairs that we do have were causing grief, and I did borrow a chair from uh, the other building, and it was a, very helpful. But again, like everybody else, and like I've stated earlier, I don't think it's something we need to 
been writ with now and we should put it off. And if it's a one off with somebody myself, I'm pretty sure that uh, we can put it off further and uh, I can find a solution um, individually. Great, thank you. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor to remove this item. I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Hands are popping up like crazy. Hands can come down. Except for Director Monteith. <laughs> Anybody opposed? Okay, so that carries that is off the list. Thank you very much. We'll go to the next item, Jim. Thank you. Replace sign and skylight, $14,000. No, oh, we, we did that. that. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Dyer Mandel Library upgrade. Actually, if I can add, Madam Chair, before I go on to the library, I, I because this slide, I guess, maybe wrapped up some of our items, I think it's important to note the skylights, they are failing. They're they're required to be uh, fixed. Um, the, the replacement of the sign, that's our, that's our front office sign, and uh, it's been on our list to replace for some time. It's, we, what we have there is is fine, it's adequate, but the intention was to put a, a, a better uh, sign in place, a little more uh, uh, obvious to the public. Uh, we've heard some feedback. It's a small sign that was put up, I guess, uh, probably in the area 15 years ago. Uh, so that's about $6,000. So I think in light of our discussions uh, with the boardroom chairs, I just wanted to make sure that you knew that that was a separate item that is certainly at your discretion at around $6,000. Skylight's at $8,000. Okay, so Mark, can I clarify, if we replace the sign, it would be a lot bigger is the plan? Yeah, that's the idea. The space it is in right now, we, I, I don't, I wasn't involved when it was put in many years ago, but it's, uh, it's again, perfectly adequate. It's just the intention was to put in a, a better sign to showcase the building sure. itself and the space. Okay, let's see if there's uh, some feedback on that. Director Bush, go ahead, please. Yeah, I just think because of, you know, fairness of the taxpayers that this probably isn't a good year to do it. Not that I'm against right. it, but right. I'm just thinking it might be the wrong time. Sure, so were you looking to make a motion? Yeah, I could do that. We removed the $6,000 for the sign the replacement sign. for this year. Okay, and it looks like it's being seconded by Director Roberts. Is that correct, Director Roberts? Yes, thumbs up. Yes, Director Santos, go ahead, please. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, so we're just removing the sign but keeping in the skylights. Is that the idea? Thank you. Right, yeah. I and mean, the skylights are, are not, we're not looking at that as a beautification project. I think we're dealing with a leaky roof problem more well, so maybe. That was my question. There's probably damage uh, yeah. being incurred. Correct. Okay, so right now we have a motion on the floor to remove the $6,000 for the sign uh, for next year. Is, are there any other comments or questions on that? Okay, I'm not seeing any. So I'll call the question on removing the sign from this project list. All, all in favor? Hands are going up. Thank you. You can take your hands down. Except for I'll paint you guys a sign for six thousand. <laughs> Thanks, Director Roberts. Anybody opposed? Okay, that carries. So that is out. Okay, next one, Jim. Is a Naramata Library upgrade thirty thousand dollars funded through reserves? Okay, we'll go to Mark on that. Yeah, thank you. Again, we did uh, a building assessment on this particular location as well, Madam Chair, which identified some immediate needs that we needed to address, uh, primarily the heating system as well as the windows. So we've put those in our 2021 plan for uh, replacement and our budget is $30,000 and we're pulling from reserves on that. Okay, thank you. I don't have an issue with this one. Um, anybody have a question or comment? Director Johansson, go ahead, please. Thanks, Chair. Just a, just a question on, on reserves. Um, I'm assuming the, the Neuromatics is coming in out of a building reserve somewhere and just wondering if, if that's the case and looking at the uh, repairs to the, to the RDOS building, if there's a reserve that we could have used for that. Okay. 
Jim, go ahead. While we have reserves, we don't have anywhere near enough to use for something like that. Like what? For, for the RDS building. Okay. Did, sorry, did you get that, Director Johansson? Yeah, thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. Anybody have any other questions or comments regarding Naramata Library upgrade? Okay, not seeing any. We'll move on to the next slide. So th this slide is regarding the information services and uh, the first one is the network infrastructure upgrades and it connects all, all different sites, it's security, wireless, SCADA, etc. On the right of that uh, slide you'll see how it's being funded and Danny's here to answer any of your questions and, and speak to this. Okay, Danny is joining us at the table. So, Danny, did you have any overview to give us on this, or were you just looking for questions? Uh, I can do a bit of an overview. Uh, this is fairly high level still. There is an IT assessment that's uh, just finishing up, which we hope to bring to the board within the next uh, few meetings, if possible, to go over that, which we'll cover this off in more detail. But in terms of IT infrastructure, it's really looking at the foundation of all of our communication networks. So it does touch every facility that we have in the sense of connectivity. Um, those are just some of the services that we are overlay here. So when we talk about SCADA, security, everything is happening over our telecommunication links. These are remote offices, remote areas, both to monitoring and, and uh, operations. And through the assessment, we've identified uh, a lot of the infrastructure that's really needed to move forward. So uh, this is the beginning of a multi-year plan in the sense of addressing that infrastructure shortfall and uh, bringing all the regional areas and sites up to the Okay, thank you, Danny. Did anybody have a question for Danny? Well, we can't see, we can't quite see the total on this uh, oh. slide. So I'm just trying to read it. It says 251,500, yeah. 251,500 is the total in the dark blue. Right. Okay. The infrastructure, I believe, was 160. $5,000. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Correct. So section one totals 165000 Yeah, it's 165 Of this chart. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes, Director Canodal, go ahead, please. We received some COVID uh, funding for this. I'm going to assume you can use uh, some or a good portion of it for the AV video conferencing upgrade portion. Is that correct? I, we'll be bringing back a report to the board, and the board will decide how it's spent. This would seem a logical Place. expense out of that fund that we got. So uh, one would think so, Director Knodel. And did you have another yeah. follow-up question? No, nope, thank you. Okay, thank you, Director Knodel. Okay, so we would see this uh, a report back in December then, CAO, that about that funding we received yeah. and how it can be utilized. I know there's some restrictions. There's some eligibility criteria. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Back to you, Jim. So the next one is the video conferencing upgrade, 61,500. Okay. Danny? I can speak to that. So currently, we, some of you may say, well, you know, if it's in WebEx, you know, where does this, this money change? So most of the equipment we've been using from WebEx, we don't own. Uh, I've been able to nicely uh, have it on loan for a while. So um, <laughs> at some point, that needs to be addressed. It's not physically installed. Uh, that's that's uh, been a tribute to why there's kind of cables leading around and things like that, because we don't physically own the video equipment and the technology that we've been kind of using to get by um, and saving money by, you know, having good contacts and good callings that are, are able to help out the regional district. So uh, in that sense, at some point, this is the, the budget that I've looked at it, trying to get proper wiring installed, uh, actually owning the equipment uh, and a proper microphone system, as well as dealing with uh, directors coming from afar 
with better headsets or a microphone or dual monitors, something to make the meetings themselves better from that point of view. So the dollars that are tied up in there are looking to address that video conferencing experience, both from the directors uh, coming from afar, as well as the building itself here, dealing with the acoustics, projections, and the equipment itself. Okay, thank you. Any questions on that, directors? Okay, we'll go on to item three on that slide. No, I'm right awesome. here. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Director Vasilaki. Sorry about that. Um, the question I have is, um, are you going to look as to the future that we might be doing through the boardroom where we are broadcasting our meetings at all times? Um, is the wiring going to take that into consideration to make sure you don't have to do things all over again in the future? Thank you. Uh, through, through the chair, uh, we currently broadcast all of our meetings today, uh, uh, not only through YouTube, but as well as a recording of those meetings and uh, posting them on our website. So we've been doing that for a few months now. Um, the equipment itself has that capability inside, so um, the wiring of the video system isn't, that doesn't affect the wiring of the video system. That's a capability of the units we're using now. Okay, thank you. Director Canodal, go ahead, please. Through the chair. I'm just concerned that that's not enough uh, money for this uh, type of project. Uh, it seems to me this stuff costs considerably more than $61,500. Danny? Well, uh, that's what... Uh, that's the quote? That's what I've gotten some prices in on the pieces. Uh, uh, part of the, the difference is that uh, uh, I come with a lot of the experience. So on a lot of the quotes you would have seen, there would have been an installation charge in the sense of the programming, the configuration, the development, the consulting of the space. Uh, that's something I have in my own expertise, and it's something that the cost of that is going to be just my normal time and wages in a sense. So there's a significant amount of this that would have been different from other quotes due to the fact that now this work uh, has expertise in house that we can be able to leverage. Yeah, good. So it's more of just the equipment cost, not as opposed to the full installation or programming or configuration or setup of that equipment. That's something that we don't have to hire consultants to do. Oh, again, a deal. Good question, you. Director Canodal. You are money we'll well spent. Thank you. Yeah, we'll go to Director Bush. Yeah, so it might be just me, but uh, I have a hard time understanding Danny with his mask on. So I don't know if that can be changed or not. But There, he took it off. Thank you. Uh, any other questions on this item? Yeah, um, Director Vasilaki, hey, again, sorry, you, you doesn't seem to, uh, my hand doesn't seem to be going through. Um, <laughs> Uh, the the other question I have with all this uh, concerning my first question, will we be able to broadcast on Shaw uh, with um, the equipment that we have at the present time or in the future? So that the public as a whole can actually, those that don't have computers or whatever, they can actually view our meetings. Um, the equipment here proposed has that capability. It, that's more of an agreement with Shaw tying into their uh, community feed. Uh, it's definitely something I can look into and contact Shaw, uh, but it's typically been up to Shaw to, to make those connections. We do have Shaw in the building, so I don't foresee it as being an issue uh, for Shaw to do. It's just how we would tie into that. Uh, it's not a limitation of the equipment, though. Right. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions on that topic? Okay, Jim. The last one for this one is Martin Street wiring upgrade. Uh, do that to Danny. Go ahead, Danny. So uh, this will, uh, it is one item that I know will come up uh, through the IT assessment, but as we were going through, uh, a lot of the wiring that's in the building is, is not what would be considered today's standards. We, we actually are limiting ourselves to the wiring sense of what we do with our computer upgrades and things like that. We have computers that are running um, or capable of running at a higher speed, but our wiring is actually not uh, up to par. Um, so there's multiple uh, drops that need to be literally replaced um, 
They're using easily uh, 15 year old cabling technology. Um, on top of that, uh, a number of runs that are run through the building are not sufficient. We keep uh, adding more devices and more types of devices. Um, yeah. As we add those devices, we're continually having to put little pieces of equipment called switches or hubs and branching it off. That becomes a concern in the sense of managing the network when you have a whole bunch of these little switches. So we take the wire, uh, we, we split it off into three or four with these little devices, and that's just an, not a, a very good way to manage that network. Um, so there's an additional charge there of another 30 lines that we identified at the building to um, add more network drop connections. And that's a budgetary, it depends on you know the actual contractor, of course, with all these, we'll try to get the best price we can at the time, but it's around uh, typically anywhere from 200 to 250 dollars a drop is what we do for budgeting. Thank you, Danny. Any questions on that? Oh, everybody's good. Looking forward to some technology upgrades. Okay, that takes us to the end of that slide. And directors, that takes us to lunchtime. So this is a good spot to break for lunch. We are going to take 30 minutes and start back up at 1230. See you then. And
Okay. Okay, we're unmuted. So good afternoon, directors. We are back from lunch and we're gonna proceed with the rest of the budget meeting and hopefully we get through everything by three o'clock today <laughs> or sooner, maybe. Yeah. If, I'll, I'll talk fast. Yeah, so we're gonna turn things back over to Jim. Go ahead, Jim. Thank you. So this slide here, I, I just produced it to show all, all of you how close everything is between 2021 and 2020. There are some changes, uh, especially in the municipalities, and that's directly due to the new administration policy, where before the wages weren't included and the capital costs, so it's municipalities that actually benefit some. There are some benefits in some of the electoral areas, however, using the policy. But if there's any questions, you see, if you take a look at the variance, and that's why I do have the variance, it's not material and 2020 being a troublemaker that it is, it actually was out 0.01. But, but Jim, this is 2020 has capital and program changes. And program, yeah, no. yes, correct. So, but at the end of the day, this is a tax requisition and for the capital projects, they're all funded through uh, reserves and the, the tax requisition isn't there. So that's why it's actually uh, more comparable. Then, yeah, yeah. grants and programs. Gra co correct. Next slide, please. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> so this is just, I like pies. I can't see the colors, but I do like the pies. <laughs> and I, this is just something so that you as the, the board can take a look at who's uh, paying the, the different pieces of the pie. This one's for regional services. I also have one for rural services. If you take, if I had the, the 2020 uh, pie, it would be pretty close to this one here. The percentages are fairly close. So if there's any questions on this, I, I, this is more just for show to see that there was some due diligence. I, I looked at, I'm very big on reasonableness tests. And by looking at this and I looked at the 2020, it was reasonable to me that what we produced was fairly accurate. It, Okay, we have some questions, I believe. Director Gettins, go ahead, please. Are you there, Director Gettins? Oh, hand disappeared. No. Okay, maybe that was a... Oh, oh go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I can see the presentation, but I can't see the speaker in the boardroom. Is the video oh, on the, the board? board? No, there we are. Thank you for that, Director Gettins. Okay, so Should now, yeah, we were just, over? yeah, she was pointing out we weren't active our our, our video. So oh. she, you could hear everything though, Director Gettins, correct? Yes. No, nope, we're okay, Jim. Okay. Yep. So, so the next slide is essentially similar to the other one, but it's rural services only. And again, I looked at this year, 2020, 2021, Looked fairly con looked consistent. There wasn't any major variances. If I saw one piece of the pie double and or materially different than another piece, I knew that there was something wrong. I didn't see that. So I just, uh, again, showing this just for interest sake. So the next slide is actually where the, the, where the piece of the pie is. That's where it makes the pies. And it's okay. services that are split up or classified by Jumped region. Ahead one. Am I two oh, did you? Oh, oh no, I just have a sheet. No. That, okay, that's okay. Go to the next one, Bill. We just have an extra sheet. In there. Okay. Yeah, the, that one will show up in a minute. Okay. Okay, so regional programs. So this is where majority of you would, would pay for the regional programs. It's split up by department and page number. Section two of your budget that you received last week has, has a page number in the bottom right hand corner and for those of you that are interested in looking at the exact detail if you look at the budget page you can go from that budget page directly to section two of the budget and you can have you can see the, the detail of what makes up the the tax requisition or the, i've got expenses on the other side but the expenses and the revenues are the same uh, that this more focuses on the tax requisition because that's what your taxpayers are paying and the rest of it is either funded from previous taxes uh, in from reserves or it's funded from the uh, donations or DCCs, etc. So 
if you take a look at the bottom right hand corner, the percentage increase uh, for regional programs is 0.59%. Uh, but that's the weighted yes. average. There are some that are higher. Environmental. <laughs> We're going to stop right. with that, darling. That's what I said. Oh, sorry. Okay. So if there's any questions on this page, we can actually go to the, the page number to, to the, that the budget is associated with and I have some answers for you. A lot of cases, the material change is directly due to a surplus being used to artificially reduce the tax requisition. On those ones there, there's not much I can do. Because either, and I've had some meetings with some of your directors, you want the money put back in, so then the tax requisition has to go up. There, there's no other and it's or buts about it. With your new policy, that should flatten out the curve. So no more major increases or decreases unless something major happens. So, and is there okay. Thank you. Um, Director Roberts, go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you to the chair. And not that I'm picking on this one, but I don't see the mosquito. Um, that's a um, a regional program, is it not? Sub regional. Not everybody no. participates in that, Director Roberts. Rural. So, so that's under rural. Yes. Yeah, so what we're seeing right now is everybody's paying into. Re re yes, regional programs. So, so mosquitoes is uh, actually Department 57, page 129 of the budget, and it's under rural programs, and that's coming up in, in a few minutes. Okay, any other questions on this page? Okay, I'm not seeing anything. So this one is sub-regional programs. Uh, I took the liberty of putting SIR in here. I wasn't too sure. Where to, that's the only one of the 154 services that I wasn't sure where to put it. So, no, I don't know if that's... That's fine. H and Princeton don't participate. So, um, okay. so just to let everyone know, uh, the uh, Okanagan Basin Water Board budget actually came in yesterday. So, it doesn't have the updated one. And SIR, we still don't have the, the final numbers. So, those two will be coming, are to come in and you, um, hopefully you'll get them for the next budget update. Uh, RGS uh, sub-regional, that is uh, controlled by the, us, and that is not going to change unless there's some something happens between now and uh, first reading. Any questions on that? Any questions from the board? Okay. Oh, here we go. Director Roberts, go ahead, please. Not so much a question. It's just that some of the uh, ways the slides are showing. Like, uh, you know, vision wise, I don't know what's, what's happening with them. They're squeezing together, finding it a little challenging to read some of the um, slides. Yeah, I think uh, Mr. Sfino's copied some spreadsheets right onto a PowerPoint. And that yes. Sometimes it doesn't uh, show Doesn't well. Next one should be well. Some, uh, that's one of the worst ones. And I think, uh, and this one. Bill, you did send that out via email as well. So you do have it in your email from earlier today, if you need to pull that up. So this one's shared program specifically for Area A and, and Osuyas. There's, uh, there's some, I believe in one of them, we have a little bit of a challenge on uh, a contract, a, a, the middle one, and we're talking to Osuyas on that one there. So that one. This budget may change, but as of now, that's, this is how it stands. Any questions on this one? And again, it's a negative 1.15% 1, 1. decrease. Uh, shared programs, uh, BG Karameas. So this one here is uh, neg it's a negative 0.67. Main all about that. So that bothers you guys let me know I'll just I'll round it up so the uh, again the biggest increase on this one here was the recycling garbage caramias and that's a user fee I believe I have to take a look and don't have exactly all of them but yes it is a user fee mm -hmm. and uh, the uh, lowest one is a uh, caramias pool so 
no major issues. I didn't see any major issues on this one, but if there's any questions, we can answer them. And again, you've got the slides on this. If you take a look, if you want to have more information, look at the page number and then go to section two of the budget. And then you've got the, de the detail there. So a shared program B, G, H, this was unique. I didn't see any. this one was the only one that had those three all together. 2.59% uh, increase. And, and the increase, as you can see, is only $622. But uh, whenever you have a service that's that small, every dollar counts and the percentage does climb uh, if, uh, if there's a reason. And on that one there, I believe it was the administration cost. Okay, we have a question from Director Roberts. Thank you, the Chair. Um, Jim, we talked in a meeting, we looked at uh, that this was initially um, an ask of like 8,000 from each participant, at least to, in some of us. Uh, and then you found that in this last year, it was broken down into $3,200 increment payments. And because we were talking about it, it yes. should have only been a, a one check deal per per uh, um, area. Uh, did you get clarify clarification from anybody else? Not not yet. It's, uh, it's on my to-do. Uh, this is this is one of the ones that we discussed uh, board that would like to go from a tier three to a tier four, so that uh, the administration costs will be reduced. But uh, we're not. Uh, do we ask at this point, or just ask uh, what to change from a tier three to a tier four? Do we just do it, or I don't think they know what you're talking about. So, for the administration charge, as we just we talked earlier. There's different tiers, tier one through four for the, the non-capital expenditures. And on this one here was classified as a tier three, which is the second lowest charge for the percentages. And uh, the director asked if this could be changed from a tier three to a tier four, which would mean the administration charge drops, but it would have to be redistributed to other areas in the, the budget. But that could be, that was going to plan to do that at a later date in the last That'd be good, yeah. Okay. And we'll do that. So, uh, yes, okay. So the next one is shared programs. And again, this one's Area C and Oliver. Uh, nothing major, 1.55. There are some that went up, as you can see, for the, the programs. This one here, I want to speak to that the budget changed after the, I, I sent it to the board. The, the, uh, Rec, Park Rec, uh, Rec Commission, Oliver, Recreation Commission, uh, redid the budget completely. They went from a projected deficit to a projected uh, surplus. So that's going to change the budget because the, the deficit would have been in the budget for this year that would have to be recouped. So the, the, you're going to get a new revised budget, but I want to make sure that you, you know that. That's what you see, the 27% increase. That will change materially. So that one there, I said, I, I just received it recently, and it will be part of the, the new budget update. Okay. Any questions on this? No? Okay. Okay, so next one, shared programs, area DEFI. Again, it's less than 1% increase. There's the biggest single issues that I saw was the victim services in that surplus was used to reduce the debt, the uh, tax requisition, artificially reduce it. But we were lucky that uh, we were only able to increase it by 0.08, and that's mostly because of the administration fee dropped. The other major noise bylaw, if, well, can you go to page 133 of the, the noise bylaw? Is it in my list? So I do have that flagged as uh, an issue. And it, the reason you see the increase is it's mainly due to the increase in the bylaw tax requisition. And the tax requisition for that budget went up um, what, what I would call materially. And that affects all the approximately seven other services that are charged through the bylaw expenses. So the biggest single issue on that one there was the surplus. So that there's not much I can do with that one. 
So can I, just for clarification, Jim, the heading is shared DEFI, but as we go down, we see a mix and we even have Penticton in one of them. Um, so that's how it's listed in Questica. And I'll, oh. I'll make sure that it's, it's taxed properly, but that I, I used Questica as my major tool, seeing them the new guy and that was my biggest helper. So some of these are errors than just the headings? Under no, no. Yes, it's probably just the heading. The, okay. the shared programs. Yeah. Well. yeah. So it's just. It's, yeah. Okay. So it's shared programs, but that's why I actually added on the extra DEF, etc., so that we can you can see which ones are yours. Okay. So just to to carry on with that, if we go to the last two, I don't see E in there, even though we have those bylaws and we do get complaints. Is that just a How's typo, or is there something not being applied to Area E under these? Well, again, I, this is how I got it from Questica, and I'll take a look. It's, it could be that it was entered not correctly. There are some typos in Questica okay. that I will. This is a good time to actually fix it. And John's got some. Oh, John, yes. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, area E's unsightly and tidy fees are separate. Okay. So, Questica is not wrong. <laughs> Good. Yes, it is on the your local. It is on my local. Okay, there that makes sense. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on this sheet? Okay. Rural programs and the this one's the biggest one that was hit and that was 8.52 percent. The biggest single reason is if you take a look at the middle one, uh, three, Department 300 Electoral Area Administration, you see that 13.18 percent, and that's actually because directly due because of the administration costs. So last year or this year, there was no administration on the wages, and that specific account has the a large amount over two million dollars of wages you can speak so well, i'm remembering all of this so i i have a list of concerns that i have that noel's got gave to noel so of the eight point of the eight point five two percent uh the biggest single again is the electoral area and also in this area here is where it was also hit for let's say the bylaw talked about bylaw enforcement you see that 11.77 percent that one there is recovered from recoveries from about eight other different departments, and those departments are hit. So that's not a taxable service, but it is indirectly from the other seven or eight different um, services. Okay, uh, Director Bob Coyne, go ahead, please. Yeah, under animal control, I don't believe we're part of that, and it's got us in there. Yeah, I don't think they are supposed to be in there. John, do you know anything about that? Area um, H, let's do it. Yeah. So, so be assured, though, under the tax requisition, that would, if you're not in there, that's different than Questica. And it's, we'll make sure that you're not being charged for it. Mm -hmm. We'll have to make a note for that. Yeah, they like their animals out of control. Okay, uh, Director Pendergraf, you're next. Okay, thank you. Again, on animal control, it was last year that we changed the service levels in each area and some wanted patrols and others didn't. So I'm wondering if those service levels or reflect changes are reflected in how the budget was distributed amongst those areas can, in taking part in that. I'm just going to take a look at the wages that were mm -hmm. estimated in there, and that should give me your answer. Yeah, we did decide certain areas mm -hmm. wanted, like area E, and I think D, maybe D, I, F, wanted to have some of the patrols, and, and, oh, and others things. didn't, like A, A, B, C, um, didn't. So 
That's a good, good reminder there. So what I'm seeing here is that the contract for animal control was went from $92,000 in 2020 to 96,000. So I don't see that reduction, but I'll have to put a note on there and see if, if it's happening there. I don't know if, if there was a reduction or just a reallocation of okay. uh, between okay. the, the so it could be a reallocation. Yeah. Yes. So if we could check on yeah. that, yeah. I, I'll put that as a note. You got that? Okay. okay. So we got a note, and we'll bring that up at the next meeting. Okay. Great. Thank, thank you, you. Uh, Director Gettens. Your next, please. Uh, thank you to the chair. I had the same question as uh, Director Pendergraft because I'm pretty sure we saw. Um, a spreadsheet of kilometers or how often they spend in each area and i think that shows mm -hmm. where they're spending their time because i think area f um was interested in looking at on call because we don't have public beaches and that kind of thing that other other areas do so i'd like to see that report as well please so one of the sections that i gave you listed the tax requisition for everything that each one of you pay for and I can take very quickly take a look at that and have it with me, but you do have it and I, I can send you an email. It should show what you paid this year and what's projected for you to pay for next year. And Thank that you. should yeah, reflect. Pardon me? Yeah, I can see it here. I've got it in front of me. Okay, but I think so we that should. Put an area F and go to the on-call system. Okay. Yeah, that's what I think. Okay, we'll get back to you on that one. Okay, thank you. Director Roberts, go ahead, please. To the chair, thank you. Uh, mine relates to every everybody else, but I, I do, I, I thought it was the, um, the previous, not just the last budget, but the previous budget that we discussed that basically B, I know B and G, we were going with just complaint driven. We don't have um, drive, drive around and I never did. Yeah, I'm not sure that we had put that in place before the 2020 budget, but I'm I'm not sure. Director Pendergraph, do you recall? It was only in 2020 that we made those changes. Okay, great. Thank you for that clarification. Well, I can check the tax requisition with John and make sure that that was applied for for 2020. Right, but this is the breakdown of some electoral areas chose to continue with regular dog control p patrols and others didn't. They wanted it to be complaint driven. Right, okay. Uh, Director Roberts, did you have another question? No, nope. okay. Anybody else? So, so from here on in, we're looking at the local area by electoral area. And they vary from depending on which services that uh, you're paying for. For you'll you'll see one that's over forty three thousand percent. I know what Bill's laughing at, <laughs> and I I want to speak to that one. That one there 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 was a five thousand dollar surplus in twenty nineteen that was used to reduce the tax requisition in twenty twenty. So talking to the, the looking at the budget and talking to the staff, we needed to put the money back. And it's by, by, just by doing that, it looks ridiculous when it's that high, but it, that's what it is. It's, uh, again, it was a misuse or the, the use of surplus that would made that happen. And the same thing with uh, the other 533%, that, that's a surplus issue. Anything where you see the major changes, the uh, victim services, A, uh, service 415, that's a huge increase. Again. Well, that's a it's $138 tax requisition for this year. So you had a very happy taxpayer this year and not a very happy taxpayer for next year. So but why is it 5.33? The majority is, is because of the, the use of surpluses. Okay. And, and you're going to see that throughout. The next one would be local area programs for B. Wow. Yeah. Any questions on area A? We know that the electoral area directors may need to book in a one on one with Jim. So we don't want to, you know, go through every single line here, maybe, and, and 
detail, but is there a general question or anything, Director Pendergraph, you need looked at? No, you're good. Okay. Thank you. And you are correct. Uh, we are planning meetings. I've already had some, but we're going to have some more. Right. Okay. So local area programs B, and there's a the biggest single one is uh, the community parks increases. That was on, if I go to page 14, I just want to quickly discuss why uh, that happened. That's one of the one uh, two dollars increases in the tax requisition for administration charges on that one there and also four thousand uh, dollars there was miscellaneous revenue that was estimated to be brought in for 2020 that never happened so that, that's a four thousand dollar hit that the taxpayer has to pay rather than wherever that four thousand dollars is supposed to come from so that, that's the two biggest issues Any other any questions? No. See, uh, again, uh, there's the biggest thing for victims. You'll see victim services. There's uh, there's three budgets, I believe, for victim services. All three had, for whatever reason, we didn't pay out the in 2019 anything for the, the five thousand dollars. So that five thousand dollars is used to reduce the tax acquisition for 2020. And we had we had to put it back, and that's why you see the big increases in there, and and I'm hopefully this is the last year that you'll see a budget like this. It's still, uh, it's under 2.2, well just above uh, CPI. CPI would have been 2.20. I'm, I'm estimating, and that's 2.21. And the other biggest uh, is the water system loose bay, and there's some expenses in there that and that's page 64, and I do want to talk about that. And, and that one there, surplus. Surplus was used, uh, $3,400 surplus was used to reduce the, the tax requisition. The uh, administration cost went uh, up by $1,000. So that's the two issues that caused that to increase. And there's a couple zeros there, which was nice to see. And the, zero, the zeros weren't forced zeros. So I, it, that's how they turned out. And, I will leave them. I'm not gonna. We're not gonna have an artificial increase in taxes if it doesn't need it. Okay. Anything? Uh, yes. Go ahead, Director Knodo. Just one thing on Loose Bay, and I sent an email out earlier this uh, today, um, <clears throat> where Area C is is carrying weight of of uh, Loose Bay, but there are benefits to other areas, so I'm. Going to be looking for some sharing here on that, uh, rather than Area C carrying it on its own. Thank you. Okay. Anything else on this sheet? Okay. Okay. So local programs, Area D. This is less than what I considered or CPI will be, 1.61% increase. Uh, the, one of the biggest areas, economic, economic development, and that's on page 112. And I just quickly want to talk, talk about that one there. And that one there, $30,000 was used for uh, surplus to reduce the tax requisition. And there is a increase in administration costs where there was a saving this year and that savings uh, taken away. Now, just one other thing, when, when I say that there's an increase or decrease in a tax requisition, uh, more than likely, if we go back to 2019, you'll find that the 2021 is closer to the 2019 and the 2020 is an anomaly just, just because of the, the new system. And it doesn't make, it doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means that the policy that the board looked at now is different. That's all. Right, and so Jim, looking uh, because we had looked at the sheet earlier today, where there was projects we're putting in. Yes. Um, and some of it's through taxation, so that's not reflected here. This number would change that. It would change, however, in those areas that are funded from reserves, mm -hmm. it the tax requisition won't change. Right. It's the areas that uh, board authorized that are 
tax it through that, taxation. That's, yes. But the administration charge, anything that's charged or funded from uh, capital, the administration charge won't change. That will stay the same. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Director Obrick. The uh, electoral area D was split into D and I, and the economic development was previously shared between D and what is now I. And in the transition year, uh, we, you know, we're, we're, we're uh, I is not participating at the same level. So what you were saying about surpluses and other things, we, we were looking for a way to bridge forward to, to get, uh, you know, the, the office stays open and we get results. But uh, we'll speak more privately about that. But I just wanted you to have the benefit that there, there's more to the story of that economic development line item than, than uh, you might be aware. So I'll, I'll give you more detail later. But that's just by way of history. Going forward, we'll talk privately as well on what we want to do. But, but it's, uh, it's an interesting one. And it's truly, I don't think anybody else uh, of the other uh, electoral areas other than DNI had had that experience, so it's it's kind of unique to us. Thanks. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. This one's electoral area for E, and there five point six two percent. The biggest single one that you'll see there is the cemetery. That's page eighteen, and I do want to speak to that one there. The biggest increase or? for percentage, just looking at. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, rural there's projects. Uh, down with the rural projects also, but the cemetery. I just want to speak to it, just because again, maybe I'm dwelling on it. I won't. This is the last time I'll, I'll say it. There's a ten thousand dollar surplus used to artificially reduce the taxes. That's why you see that uh, increase as it is. Uh, the other biggest increase there is, is uh, electoral area E rural projects. Uh, that one there. Uh, that was I'm just going to go quickly to it. So that one there, uh, it's just, oh, I've already got it here. So there's a $30,000 increase to liquid waste management contract services, and that's why it's attributable for the increase. That's directly, so that one had nothing to do with the surplus. No. Um, it looks like the total expenses under that are projected at 164,000 for 2021. Yeah, 164, 159. Yeah, yes. so I, I wouldn't mind having a look at that again. It seems higher than than I thought that was going to be. So we can we can talk later on that, as well as parks and rec. I'm I thought that we there would be more. Um, I think we need to apply some gas tax funds there, but didn't get applied. And and you can you have you do have. Uh, additional tax mm -hmm. gas tax funds so, yeah and we talked about that but it was after the budget was made right so there will be some adjustments yes in some of these categories okay any any questions there okay and f. This area f so 28 percent decrease and there this one here if there's any questions here i didn't see anything really stand out there is a the transit for West Bench, that one there is essentially, uh, there's an increase because there's money going into a reserve, but that's something that has to be confirmed by the, the director at the end of the day. So that, that would reduce uh, the taxes even further. There, This is one of the areas where the administration policy changed, uh, reduced uh, the most, uh, mm -hmm. just looking at uh, the way the administration charges, there's very little wages. There are wages here, but this had the least amount. So this one had the biggest single impact. And I saw that early in, in, the, process, in the process. Right. Okay, go ahead, Director Gettins. Um, no, I think it's good. I think um, the reserve for the transit, we, should, we will talk about that because we don't even have a bus yet. So we should probably... No, I, I realize so one the reason why you've got a surplus in there is because we taxed for it and then didn't pay for it. Oh right. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Um yeah, it's fine. Thank you. 
And if I may, one, one of the responsibilities for the local governments is to pay for uh, the bus stops and having a little bit of money for reserves to pay for those bus stops might be a benefit to you. Thank you, I agree. Okay, anything further on the area F sheet? No? Okay. Very so cheap. we're at, at G, this one here is uh, the heritage area has got the biggest decrease and there was nothing really major that stood out on this one here. Uh, the unsightly, untidy premises for Area G, the, there's an increase there because I spoke about the bylaw. Uh, other than that, there's, if you've got any specific questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Okay, any questions or comments? Go ahead, Director Roberts. Uh, thank you. I'm looking at the form, Jim, that we talked about and some now these are some changes that you've done prior to the last budget meeting this, no there's no change this is exactly what we talked about this because i had i had uh, regional director determined budget at that time um had me at a negative uh 4.11 and now i'm at a 2.89 um increase well, I'll have to um, look at what you're looking at. i didn't make any changes on this one because we'd also made discussions around rural projects re um adjusting um oh. to deal with that the concept around reserves etc we what we did was a what if i so yes you're, you're correct it was a what if but it doesn't make the, the final change doesn't happen until uh but the, the board sees it so i don't uh, this is draft one i have draft two you haven't seen yet and there is a draft two out there that okay. you haven't seen, but I do have it. So yeah, I, I, okay. I recall that. And what if don't make it to the budget yet? Okay, because that's just my notes from our little meeting. Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. So good okay. thing I remembered. Good. <laughs> okay, H. So H 2.24, yeah. again, no, nothing really major. Unsightly at the very bottom, you'll see that there's a consistent theme there. The unsightly and tidy is increasing, increased in all areas, and that goes back to the, the bylaw issue. Uh, you've got a direct bylaw, noise bylaw one, same thing, and it's directly related to that one specific service. And that's something that could be looked at in a little bit more detail. If there's any questions, I have my Bible here. Any questions on this one? No? Okay, get the coins good. And I, so I is 1.1%, uh, straightforward. Uh, recreation for Kaleden went up, uh, and the electoral area I rural projects, that's, that's something that we haven't finalized yet. I haven't had my meeting with uh, this director but I, I can see some changes happening in this one here, just because you don't want to lose out some rural project funds. So a lot of the numbers that I used, I inherited from Questica, and that's something that needs to be looked at. Questica, well, it's a, it's a good software. I, I didn't use it for a true budget software. I used my own, I created my own, just because I, I didn't know the software, I needed to have enough trust in what I was working with. And I budget the software I created automatically made some adjustments based on some what ifs where, where I didn't see Questica doing that. So what it, it will go into Questica once the, the board is happy and does the final reading, it will be, go from my software into Questica and then uh, it's updated and we'll, I'll take a look to see if we can make Questica do some of the wish, my wish lists. And I've, I've actually left some messages with the, their managers and they're, they, they're contacting me. So I need to be, I think, have some tutorials on it and, le and learn it and be able to evaluate it so that I, I can see its strengths. It, it's good software. I, I used it. So it needs, to, I think I just need to go a little bit more into and learn more about it. So you, you guys have been easy on me. So I, 
I, I, I will be having meetings with all of you. I've had meetings, some meetings with you, and I, mm -hmm. I fully expect to have more meetings after this meeting so yeah. that once I, I, I make the updates, I'll, I'll scramble to try to get some updates because my first meeting is on Monday and, uh, and then next Tuesday. So please, I will work around your schedule. Uh, it, it's important that it gets done. And if it's in the evening, whenever, just let me know. And I'll make it happen. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jim. Were there any questions on the area I sheet? Okay, I see a question. Was that Sorry. Yes, Director Monte? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Sorry. Are, are we able Go to ahead. get um, are we able to get the actuals, maybe like a to date on some of our um, specific um, budgets that are applied to our areas? So, so as an example, I'm wondering about economic development, of course, park and recreation. Um, like, I, I guess I'm looking at, I wanted to see kind of where we're at at this time of year. We're almost at the end of the year. I'm pretty sure that we'd ha I'd have a clearer idea, I guess, of what last year has done so that I can look at this year's budget. Is that possible? Yeah, I see heads nodding. Yes, here from finance. If I may add. Yeah, go so ahead, Jim. One of the things that I did when I looked at the budget, I just didn't download from Questica. I looked at your actuals and I, I, I also looked at the projections that the managers put in there. Uh, I didn't always agree with them but and, and might have had a little bit of going back and forth and sometimes uh, they were right and sometimes I was right. Can't always be right. So it, it would be uh, something that you want to take a look at. It would be great. We can, we can actually produce that report. Thank you. A question from Director Roberts. Thank you to the chair. Um, I believe we, we kind of talked about this with John Kervinka before about having some sort of Excel or a living document that we can kind of, as we follow through, though they are, are not yet passed at the budget or whatever, but when we're dealing with the CFO and we're making changes, because it gets so confusing that we have like, delays or changes or we get handed our, our our booklet and it's different by five percent um and it, it's just really hard to follow along because you're looking for you know what's solid right here what's waiting for when there is a vote and then what changes you made when you did your individual meeting so um, it always made a lot more sense when i was sitting with the cfo looking at their computer and we made adjustments and and potential gains and losses. And then all of a sudden you walk away from it and then you come up to another presentation and you feel lost again. Now I'm, I've usually mostly lost in the most of my life, but you know, we, we try. Go ahead, Jim. So you're not the only one that told me that. I, I heard that the, you have meetings and the next time you had a meeting, things changed. That doesn't, that won't happen anymore. If the, the changes that uh, occur will only occur after the board okays it. Uh, the, when we have the one-on-one -on -one meetings, if they're strictly your own uh, local area programs, we can change that right there and it won't affect anybody else. But anything that affects the, the group as a whole, that will be a board policy change and you're not gonna be surprised. They, I would like to get do the updates as soon as I, uh, I get the authority to do it, I've got a, a lot of changes here made after today. And as soon as your next meeting, the changes will be there. But also anything that changes at your meetings, your one-on-ones, I'd like to tell the board as a whole so, so that there's no surprises. And not that it affects their tax requisition or their taxpayer, but just so that they understand where you, where you made your changes. So I am documenting any of your requests. So the requests that you had, they're not in the system yet. However, I've documented them and the board will see those changes uh, at, a, at a next meeting. Right, and that also ensures transparency to the public because these, these are live and recorded meetings too, so they will see that presented back. Yes. Okay, thank you. Director Holmes, you're next, please. Thank you. Um, so, 
in there. There's a page number for the different items. So um, I'm, I'm look, the budget I'm looking at is the one we received in our, in our agenda last week no, on November 13th. Is, uh, and they don't, at least on my copy, they don't have any page numbers. Is there another uh, document I should be looking at? Um, I'm, I'm trying it to, I'm trying to match your section. Three. Page no, he's looking at the PowerPoint you had last time. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, there's a not, document. It's a, it's a PDF document. Yeah, in, no, he's looking the at the, the big 900 page document yeah. or so, right, Doug? Yeah. Yeah. It's there's it's split up into sections, and if you go to section two, it has it, it's a PDF document that has 154 budgets on there, and then the budget should be in the bottom right hand corner. If the page number didn't come up, we'll rescan it. I'll get staff to rescan it and send it out again. Is this the one though, Jim, where we have? page numbers within a column on oh, in the chart it's this yeah but you go to a page yes and then there's it has a, a budget page number in a in the chart right yes yes because i know it was that's very it. confusing for people last time. that's exactly the reason <laughs> i put the page number in so that you can go to section two right and go right and that's why i put the page number okay. up there too if you the third line uh on the left here's the page number so that you can see and go right to your own budgets right. and see the detail. And I and I would suggest if this works, Jim, that if you know directors uh, wanted to come sit down with you to to get through that a little bit easier, they could book an appointment yes. with you. And I've also what I also did is for each one of the uh, electoral areas and the municipalities, I've actually made pages, copy pages of their budget, and it's actually in one section, and that's section four, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Did you have another question, Director Holmes? Yeah, I, I see that. I hear what you're all saying, but uh, I, on my PDF, I just can't find any page numbers at all. So it makes it kind of hard when you refer to a page number and you don't even know where you know where, I, what how to go. Where or to do go. you have your index down the left side? Because you need if yeah. you click on the yeah. section. Yeah, all the sections. Yeah. Yeah, so you click on a section and, and I believe the page number references into the chart. Is that correct? There's, yeah, maybe Noelle will turn to that. Well, she's going to look it up. Right it is oh, that it's one. The bottom that right hand okay, so then but some of that didn't translate it, to the rest of us. When it was scanned. It yeah, when it was scanned, Director Holmes, that mm -hmm. part didn't come through. I'll get for everyone. to scan it yeah. and send it okay. out again. Okay, so uh, Jim just said he's going to get that re-scanned and sent back out, so you'll have the cor corresponding page numbers in, in the corners as well. Okay. I know okay, the charts you. also had page numbers, they budget did. page numbers in them for people to reference, and between that and page numbers on or off of the bottom corners of pages, it was very confusing. Because this is the most, this is the Bible for the whole budget. Yeah. Everything, everything is tied to this. So then we need to be able to follow the Bible easier. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Thank Good. you. Thank you, Director Holmes. So we'll get that sort out. Um, was there somebody else that had a hand up? Sorry, Carla, it was me. I, uh, yeah, I was wondering if we... So I was wondering if we could see on the screen what you guys are talking about, because I'm with Director Holmes. I'm not following this at all. And I found um, referencing to the document really challenging. So are we able to see it on the screen and maybe show us what you guys are looking at so that we can see? Well, I think it might be better that we resend it out where the where there were missing uh, page numbers. So then you will have the correct usable document more usable document would that work and then see if there's an issue after that yep that works thanks okay thank you director holmes a question again no nope, leftover hand okay and um i think we can point out obviously some of the numbers that we saw today I think are going to change anyways. For example, I don't believe the number in there is the Okanagan Regional Library Board budget number because we just set that budget. Yes. So you're going to see that you know that will change. I believe we should see that go down. 
hopefully. Um, and then we need to have uh, come forward then the discussion on the money from the government, the COVID money. Um, was there a deadline that had to be used by? Uh, no. no, okay. So we could we look at a report within the year. Okay. So we could look at that, those funds and if, if we want to apply some of them to certain things that are in the budget for next year. Uh, so that would certainly help with our taxation levels as well. Um, now, did you have anything else to present, Jim, or have we made it through? I, I believe we made it through. Uh -huh. Well, we should talk about uh, next meeting date. Yes. Um, so any further questions on what was presented today? Uh, yes, Director Johansson, go ahead. Thanks, Chair. Just a quick question for Jim. Did you say that you got a revised budget from the Oliver Parks and Recreation, particularly around yeah. programs? I, yes, uh, for the their area, all the budgets changed. They, they went from a deficit to a uh, surplus. So they've asked me to adjust it. And I, it was too late for this. Like, I didn't want to make any changes just because uh, it was just one off. But you will get the, the updated budget in the next budget that you receive. So the tax so, position will be dropping. Okay. Um, if you get a chance, could you please send me that uh, Oliver Parks and Recreation budget? Probably uh, Director Canodal as well. Sure. Well, yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And and I thought Director Johansson was going to offer some money to Director Canodal for Loose Bay. No, not yet. I'm um, sure, sure there will be a discussion <laughs> later. I think that'll be a discussion later because okay. I do agree with Director Canodal that there is a lot of uh, uh, value that that campground provides for the entire region, not just Oliver, but mm -hmm. uh, Area A and also Asuyas and maybe over in Coston as well. But uh, look for looking for some recommendations from staff on that. Okay, thank you very much. Any other uh, no. questions or comments? Uh, Director Pendergraph, go ahead, please. Now, this isn't related basically to what we were presented today, but it has to do with the, the budget that we're dealing with, and that is last year's uh, letting go of the two department managers. Are those wages still in this year's budget for a rehire in the future, or have they been taken out of the budget completely? They should be out. Yes, they should be out. They are out. Okay, so they're supposed to be out? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That would reflect mostly in general government and electoral area planning and probably electoral area admin, I think mostly where they yeah. are. And then uh, the public works uh, position would have been uh, allocated widely across uh, water systems and wastewater and salt waste, but probably in small percentages. Okay, thank you. I'll look into it. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Um, okay. So we need to look at an, the next date that we're going to discuss budget. So, Bill? Well, I was going to ask Christy if she had something to Okay. Like. Hi, sorry. Um, what was the question? <laughs> Got her. When is the when are we looking at doing at the next budget discussion? <clears throat> December fourth. December fourth. December fourth. Are we sure? That should be a Friday. It, yeah. it is a Friday. That's right. Did um, did everyone have that pre booked? Yeah, she had checked that out. Okay. That follows the December third board meeting. Regular board meeting. Yeah, it's all new to me. Yeah. I wasn't yeah, in my calendar. Yeah, I don't have either. Yeah, I didn't have it either. So I, I think we originally looked at it. I had it booked as a possible. Yeah, we had it as a tentative date. Okay. That so, should be yeah. out with the dates. So are we uh, going with 9 a.m. on the 4th? Correct, Christy? 
that was what we had planned and we'll make sure that that's in everybody's calendar if that's decided today a suitable day. Okay. Is there anybody opposed to December 4th at 9? No, we're okay. Do we uh, have any anticipation? Is that a half day, full day? I would say that's probably a half day. Probably a half day. Okay. So we could look at nine till noon, but uh, with some flexibility. Yeah. Okay, great. When's our WebEx Christmas party? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we don't have that planned yet either. Uh, Director Gittin, do you have a hand up? Go ahead, please. Yeah, thanks to the chair. Um, I think next week we were going to have another strategic planning meeting, but that meeting was canceled. And I'm feeling like there's a few things that I I'm, thought we would be discussing around strategic planning that I don't think we've touched on yet. Um, one is that I put forward a notice of motion for an Indigenous relations person. I think staff is working on that for sure. Um, but if it's not talked about now or talked about within our budget, it seems kind of predetermined that it's not going to happen in 2021 if we don't give it a bit of space to have conversation around. I know uh, Director Ventimilla wanted to hear more about notice of motions and how that impacts staff time and why some notice of motions get done um, more quickly and some, some take a little bit longer. I was hoping to hear from staff around the communication strategy for 2021 um, and just how that relates regionally and what is that plan and then also just how it impacts support for specific areas. And then I also put forward a request to talk further about invasive species because that's coming up a lot in my area. Um, staff had it confirmed back to me that it's sort of a, a growing concern across the region. So without having that meeting next week, I'm curious as to when we have these conversations in a way that, you know, allows us to talk about some of them. I had another director talk to me about economic development and what um, some possibilities are around that, specifically around the Okanagan Film Commission. So I don't know if these are necessarily board meeting discussions. They feel more strategic to me. I certainly would like to make sure I have enough time to hear from my colleagues around the table around their thoughts as well. Okay, so we did have some talk about adding additional strategic planning time to a regular board meeting day. Yeah, I'll put that on the third. Uh, so we could look at that for the third, Director Gettins. So uh, folks would, would need to be looking at planning on a full day, I would think, if we're if we're adding some strategic planning to a regular board day. Um, I, I could go to Ms. Malden. Sorry, go ahead, Director Gettins. <laughs> Sorry, there's a gap. Sorry about there a lag or whatever. Yeah, I think they're important conversations, and I just really wanted to like give it the space it needs to have the conversations. And I, I think I think it's just really critical that we do this, especially when we're not meeting in person, because we just lose so much of that one-on-one -on -one connectivity. We don't get a lot of little side conversations and what we hear about other people's thoughts. And you know, some of the, some of the ones that I have here, I I think our merit conversation and I'm sure other directors have other things they'd like to have some more conversation around as well. So let's make sure we're giving ourselves the time we need. Okay, thank you. Ms. Malden, do you know when we're hearing back on, on some of those things, uh, Indigenous relations um, request and uh, communications update? So we are working on the um, the concept or you know the facts behind an indigenous position or um structure uh we hope to have that to the second meeting in december it's a ton of research and background so um you know we don't want to spend a whole bunch of time if it's not something that's going to proceed but we do have to have enough information in order to put forward to the board so we are working on that as for the communication strategy we generally wait until the board has determined their priorities and then we frame our communication strategy around that otherwise we'd be guessing okay um so when we do we're going to be setting the agenda for december 3rd for the regular board meeting and that will allow us to have a good idea of what time amount of time we would have for strategic planning. Um, 
Would it be a recommendation then that if folks have some, uh, along with Director Gettin's uh, suggestions, uh, suggestions of what you'd like to see on a topic list that you send that in to Ms. Malden via email? Chair, could I just make a suggestion as well? Mm -hmm. uh, when we resend out the calendar invite for December 4th for budget in the morning, 9 till 12, should we send it out for a few more hours just in case that afternoon is needed? Not for budget, but for strategic planning? Um, well, we could. We, um, we don't know yet, or I don't know yet what's on the third, how long that board meeting day is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if that's a if that's a shorter day, then we may want to tackle some strategic planning, as that could have some budget implications. So if if we could just ask that the board members know that the third and fourth um, could potentially be longer <laughs> days or till three o'clock each day, and you just try to block that off, and and we'll sort through based on what we have coming forward on the third for regular board meeting. That would be appreciated. Director Sentis, go ahead. And thank you, Chair. Um, in in my day timer, I have December seventeenth as our second board meeting, uh, which would also be the uh, Osher meeting. Uh, but I also have a question mark on Friday, December the eighteenth. Mm -hmm. that it could be if needed. Do you have that as well? Yeah, it was an if if needed. If needed, okay. But so it's still an, a maybe. Yeah. Um, Never know. We don't Never know. know. Yeah. That's right. That's why the question <laughs> mark is there. Okay. I think we're going to be far enough along after a third budget meeting. Yeah. We probably have enough uh, to start working on the budget bylaw. We'll see. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and is the plan... Um, in early January that the electoral areas will have their budget presentations, the, the slideshows and the consultation after yeah, first reading. After yeah. first reading. So that would be in January. Hopefully. Hopefully. Okay, good. Any other questions or suggestions? Okay, I'm not seeing any. So we're gonna get into the updated budget document with the page number sent out. Yes. Oh, we have a question. Director Gettins, go ahead, please. Sorry, I just wanted to follow up with the previous conversation. Have all the rural directors put in their priorities and they're, and they're on? Like, is it, has that all happened? Everyone's done that and their regional priorities? Uh, I believe so. If they have, if you haven't, then there's something missing Now's the time to get well, it in ASAP. So when you do that, so when I put in as an example, like the invasive species conversation, and then it didn't make it to this conversation with the board, what should I have done to have that happen? Because I sent in the list and then I had a confirmation back and then, but we never talked about it here as a board during strategic planning. So is that, that the process or should we be doing something else? Yeah, I don't think it would be a corporate priority, but um, we can certainly, if you're talking about sort of levels of service, we can certainly bring that back. Um, I think we just do that through SOSIPs, like through the, the uh, society. But I think we just give them a grant. Yeah, like it didn't hit today because it's not a budget item. Uh, I'm not sure what the, dis the discussion is to be. I know we've had citizens ask for RDOS to enforce on invasive species on people's properties. And my understanding is we don't have that authority to do that. So it's not that we can force people to remove invasive species. So um, it depends what that discussion is yeah. about. And that right. would be, wouldn't be appropriate uh, today in budget. It would be appropriate around strategic planning or even in a committee, yeah, the environment committee. Environment committee to have that discussion as to what, what the suggestions are and where something could go. It would be good to get that to Zoe or you know someone in that department first to even find out what the discussion ideas are to come prepared to a committee meeting. Right, so if just as a follow-up, by doing it now, and if the board agrees that it's something that we need to look at, then now's the time we have an opportunity to talk about it for the budget for 2021. 
if we if we don't have that conversation now and the budget continues, then we don't really have an opportunity to put it into 2021. And I don't know if it's everybody's priority or not, but it's, I just feel like we kind of rush through that conversation piece right now. And it could be just really a reflection of not being in the office as much, not having as much time talking with everybody. But I do have some things that I wanted to hear back from the board about that I thought could impact 2021 budget. And I'm feeling like that was missed in this process this year. Oh, well, we should bring them up as we go through it, Madam Chair. Right, but um, where is that going to fit? Because it's not fitting in today's budget because it's not a line item. Where, with... is, where is endangered species? Is that regional or where is it service or what? I think we need to we need to have whatever Director uh, Gettin's questions or suggestions are submitted to our staff who are handling invasive species so that they can come prepared with some feedback um, so that we're not just talking about something we're not even sure we can implement. It's regional. It's regional. Yeah, so when we go by that program on the list, if we wanted to increase it, we should just uh, talk about it then. Right. It's just a matter of giving them more money. But we need to have a discussion as to why, and, and I don't know what Director Gettins is suggesting. So we don't, what, what is our discussion? So I think what we need to have is when the director has suggestions or questions on a particular service, that needs to get to the staff so we can have an informed discussion. Otherwise, we would probably flounder along as mm -hmm. to whether it's something we need to increase the budget on or make changes if we're not hearing from the experts on it. So, um, Director Gettins, am I understand correctly, you've submitted some details then on what you're asking for under invasive species that could be passed on to staff? What I submitted was just a list of things that I wanted to work on. And this, as one example, the invas invasive species came up. Um, and that was the list that I sent to Bill and then Bill checked in with the different managers and the feedback from the manager was that this is also something that they see around the region. As far as specifics as to what we can and can't do and what we're authorized to do or who we pay more money to, I don't have those answers because I think that's part of the discussion because I don't know. I also don't know if it's a priority for the rest of the board at this moment. So. For me to stop a budget conversation and say, oh, we need to put more money into that, but without having that, that strategic conversation first, I think most board members would probably say, well, carry on because we've got all this budget. So that's the pieces that have been missing. And I think, you know, canceling next week's strategic planning, like I just feel like there's a bit of a gap here and that I'm not, I'm, that some of this conversation has been happening that I thought was going to happen. And that's my point is that we just need some time for conversation so we know what we're asking for. Right, so could we not add that on then to the third or fourth and that really we need to have some feedback from staff, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on a topic like that because we're not the experts on invasive species and are we talking about weeds, are we talking about mussels, what are we talking about and what is the suggestion? So otherwise I think we might just circle around something. So if, the, if there's a list that's come in from Director Gettins or any other directors, we need to have that provided to staff and invite them to attend a strategic plan discussion. Yeah, like I, I put it on committee. On committee. Yeah, we should just get a okay. presentation on invasive species. So then we could be looking at December 3rd, adding sure. invasive species discussion under Environment and Infrastructure Committee. But also looking at a li the list from Director Gettins, is, is there another committee meeting then that needs to be on the third if there's a different topic? So I haven't seen that list. So that that's, uh, yeah, I haven't seen it. So maybe I would suggest Director Gettins or any directors, if you're submitting a list where it's something that's not area specific to just your own area budget, if you could CC me on it, then then I'm in the loop and uh, could come more prepared as well. Anybody else with a suggestion? Director Gettins, go ahead. All right, we will ask on it. 
I think that's a really good idea, Chair, because I think there's um, there's scales of economy. You know, like if something if something's really happening in Area D, like maybe there, it would be great for me to know that because maybe I don't need to get something done in Area F because you know there's only so much time that staff have. We only have so much resources, and I just I don't feel like I have a good understanding except what we've talked about, but I don't know what's on anybody else's list. I don't know what everybody else's priorities are. And I'm, and I'm curious to know that. And I wanna make sure that we're not asking staff to do things that they can't do because we've all got these competing priorities that we haven't shared with one another. Great, thank you. Um, okay, so, or maybe Director Gantens, you could forward me that list so I, I could see what you had on the list. And if anybody else has a list to submit, um, please do. I, I don't know if we've had any other lists come in, Bill? Mm, can't recall any. Okay, we can have a look, but if, and, and if you did send something in recently, you could certainly uh, resend it and please uh, CC me. Director Monteith, go ahead, please. To the chair, I really agree with Director Gettens. I feel too disconnected in strategic planning. Um, we didn't really talk about our areas as much as I would have liked because we've got a lot going on in our areas and, and trying to plan things that make sense or moving collectively forward. I feel it's important and I don't feel like we got a chance to touch on that. And that just might have been a lot on the plate, but there's still lots of time and opportunity. Um, I too missed the opportunity to send in my list. So I didn't, I thought in previous years we got a request to send in our strategic planning. So I will get that um, sent off. But I just wanted to echo that I definitely appreciate and understand where Director Gettens is going with that. Thanks. All right, thank you. Yeah, I don't think a request went out to send it in. Um, um, yeah, I mean, for example, I didn't send in a list. Uh, mine are on here just through conversations with department managers uh, as to projects that needed to carry forward or that were new, um, in particular with Parks and Rec. So um, if you feel there's something not on there, then please submit that list, but we could allocate some time coming up on the third and fourth. Uh, Director Monteith, go ahead. Or is that a stuck hand? I'm back to not being able to remove it. Okay, <laughs> no problem. Anybody else with a question or suggestion? Okay, I'm not seeing anything. Okay, folks, so uh, we will be getting together on the third and the fourth and certainly follow up with Jim. If you have any questions or you wanna book an appointment with him to uh, review budget, uh, he's very flexible and eager to help you out. So thank you very much, Jim and Noel. And um, if there's nothing further, I am looking for a motion to adjourn corporate services. I see Director Sentis and Director Canodal, and I'll call the question then all in favor. Okay, thank you, hands can come down. And anyone opposed? Might be Director Roberts opposed or a lingering hand. There goes the hand. Thank you very much. We are adjourned, folks, and we will see you on the 3rd for 9 a.m.